Tennessee this afternoon. The Vols and Cats will battle for the Old Beer Barrel on Saturday in Lexington. Tennessee will do so as the fourth ranked team in the land. The Vols unchanged in this week's Associated Press rankings. In fact, the top five teams remain the same with Nebraska, Ohio State, Florida, and Northwestern all winning. The only change in the top ten sees Texas move to draws from 10 to 15 after losing Saturday to the Cornhuskers. Notre Dame remains eighth. If the Irish lose this coming Saturday to Air Force, Tennessee would jump into the Alliance Bowl picture. The Vols, be it a long shot, still have an outside chance at winning a national championship. The Big Orange would have to take care of its business and then, of course, get some help. Nonetheless, the possibility, at least at this late stage of the season, still exists. I mean, that was our goal for the start of the season is still within our reach. All we can do is come out and control our own destiny by going out and trying to beat Kentucky and beat Vanderbilt and see what happens from there. So, uh, you know, that's still our goal. That's still within our reach, but uh, you know, we need to take them one game at a time. Also, a remote possibility, Peyton's uh, chances of winning the Heisman this season, taking positive steps uh, this past weekend. Ohio State's Eddie George, 314 yards rushing against Illinois. Nebraska's Tommy Frazier ran for 99 and threw three touchdowns against the Kansas. And Florida's Danny Werfel tossed uh, five touchdown passes against South Carolina. He's got 27 for the season. Ready for Kentucky this Saturday up in Lexington. It's the battle for the old beer barrel, a trophy that has stayed in Knoxville since 1985. Tennessee had an open date this week, and of course, Kentucky beat Cincinnati, so the Wildcats have some momentum as Tennessee goes up to Lexington. You can see that game here on Channel 10. Our coverage starts with football Saturday at noon. Kickoff time is set for 12.30. I believe that Steve's probably in a position where he's one of the better players in our league. Uh, it's a really talented conference, but I think Steve Hamer at 250 pounds now and, and a lot stronger and, and being a senior should be considered one of the better players in the Southeastern Conference. The Lady Vols also showed off a freshman of their own. You wonder with a budget crunch in Washington if that might not affect the, you know. In the Air Force Academy, a walk to the game. <laughs> Perhaps, who knows, it may be tough for them this weekend. You know, the Bowl Alliance has got a lot of folks concerned about where Tennessee might fit into this thing. And, you know, you're not the only ones upset. From, from the scenario that we're in, you know, it's, it's worked out it's terribly unfair. Phillips speaks up, and how does the budget crunch really affect the Fighting Irish this weekend? We'll find out in a jiff. Back into the big-time bowl alliance and perhaps into the Sugar Bowl. The Irish will have to contend with an Air Force football machine that runs the option to perfection and has won six games so far this season. Notre Dame's head coach obviously is concerned. Steve. <laughs> no Lou. Before the Vols can even worry about worrying about Air Force this weekend and what they do to Notre Dame, they have to beat Kentucky. The possibility of the Vols missing out, playing in the Orange, Sugar, and Fiesta on New Year's weekend, despite a number four national ranking, has the coach miffed and calling for a change in the system. I prefer a playoff. <laughs> Probably right now. Yeah, yeah, from, from the scenario that we're in, you know, it's, it's worked out as terribly unfair. Uh, uh, in my opinion, you know, and I'd say any other Tennessean's opinion that follows Tennessee football. Uh, but it's not something I can do anything about again, so other than fuss about it a little bit, there's nothing else to do. What's the matter with fussing? Phillip admits the current bowl system also forcing the coaches to run up the scores. No kidding this season. Eric Zier can't hear the Browns and the Steelers. are against the playoff. One of the reasons every big-name team, with the exception of the national champion, would end the year with a loss. And that is perceived as being bad heading into recruiting. UT's Philip Fulmer has been one of the coaches who, who's been against the playoff system, but has kind of changed his stance because of the situation Tennessee is right now. The Volunteers, of course, are locked out of the Bowl Alliance. Even though they're 8-1 and one and ranked number 5 in the country, they can't win the SEC championship, and that means they can't go on to the SEC championship game and go into the Alliance because of that loss to Florida. The Volunteers' uh, predicament has made Fuller, uh, Fulmer much more open to a playoff system element out of it, sports writers, coaches, everything, and do something on a computer by strength of schedule, and, and we, we won two big games on the road this year, you know, with Arkansas and Alabama, and, uh, you know, consider that into the, into the mix there, and then you might have something, but that'd take a while to figure out, I guess. Mm -hmm. People a lot smarter than me would have to do it. <laughs> Fulmer said all the Volunteers can do now is win the next two games and then do some scoreboard watching. Next up for the Volunteers, Kentucky this weekend in Lexington. The Wildcats are 4-6, and six, but they do have the best running back in the SEC in Mo Williams. The Wildcats scat back, of course, has been outstanding all season long for Kentucky, and he will pose a serious challenge for the Volunteers this weekend. Tennessee is well aware of that. He's a, he's a big back. He, he runs hard, and a, 
you know, of course they run him a lot. You know, he's had three three games, I think, with 250 or more yards. And um, you know, he runs hard and he breaks a lot of tackles. And you know, he just they run him you know, until he breaks the seam. And when he does, he's usually gone. You can see the ball launchers in the Wildcats Saturday here on Channel 10. We start our coverage at noon with football Saturday. Kickoff is at 12. Cats will meet for the 91st time. Tennessee has won 58 of those games, including the last 10. The past two seasons have really been an embarrassment for the Big Blue, losing by a combined total of 100 to nothing. Last season, Peyton Manning threw a pair of touchdown passes and ran one in himself. Speaking of running, the Vols gained 332 yards on the ground in their most lopsided win ever over the Wildcats, 52 zip. All indications this year's outcome will be much the same, but just in case the players might be taking this one for granted, the coveted beer barrel has been on display at the training table as a reminder of games gone by. I, I was over there sitting on it a few minutes ago, so, you know, I don't know. We, we've had it for a while, you know. I'm glad, you know, it, it, it's a good rivalry and everything, and I'm, I'm glad these guys are going to get up for it because I know definitely we're going to get up for it. Do you get to carry the beer barrel this year if you guys win? Uh, we had not decided yet. I, I hadn't even thought about it. I guess I would or somebody would if we won, so... Uh, we just definitely want to keep it on our side. I say that, like I said, I mean, it was important last year, you know, watching Kevin Mays and Ben Talley carry that off the field. You know, people, you know, people laugh about it, but, uh, I mean, it's a big deal to, you know, for us to keep that here, and so um, that's our goal this week. Yeah, I think they'll keep the beer barrel again. See you later. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Make it a great evening. System. At his weekly press conference today, though, he said he's not totally sold on the idea just yet, but he's more likely to listen this year considering... Where's Volunteers are right now in the mix, ranked fourth, but the only place they can go is probably to the Citrus Bowl. You know, you still got to decide, you know, is the, is the second place, and he's talking about playoff format, you know, is the second place or third place team in the Southeastern Conference, are they more deserving than the Big West champion? You know, I mean, how do you, how do you figure that out? To me, if you could take all the human element out of it, sports writers, coaches, everything and do something on the computer by strength of schedule and, and we, we won two big games on the road this year you know, with Arkansas and Alabama and uh, you know consider that into the into the mix there. Meanwhile the volunteers just have to get ready to play Kentucky. Last year Peyton Manning got the start against the Wildcats and led Tennessee to the 52 to nothing victory. He also knows he gets his second start but this time on the road in Lexington where who knows what the weather's going to be like. It's a very unpredictable game. Could be snowing, could be any kind of weather coming up. Peyton Manning and the Volunteers have to be ready for everything the Wildcats throw at them. Peyton says he, though, hasn't seen much snow in his life. Um, not much, not much, you know. Um, I have been, uh, I've been skiing, you know, I think twice, but I uh, never had to play football in the snow. I mean, actually, I was, lived up in Minnesota for a couple of months, and I uh, uh, played a little pickup football in the snow, but that's a little different than playing an SEC game against Kentucky. You got that right. You can see the game. Of course, even though Phillips can't say specifically, winning this weekend might help entice a certain Kentucky high school quarterback to play down here. Might, just might, be a possibility. The only thing keeping the balls out of the bowl alliance is Notre Dame. If the Irish lose or are losing to Air Force. The annual blue-orange blood drive competition. Kentucky won last year's event. Uh, it's been quite a while, though, since the Cats have won the football game, 1984 to be exact. The ball should be able to make it 11 in a row, especially if they can contain running back Mo Williams. The junior leads the league in rushing, averaging uh, almost 145 yards per game. He racked up 272 against Cincinnati last week. You know, he runs about like 40, you know, 30, 40 times a game. You know, keeps up now, you know, swarming like we did last week against, you know, the tailback from Southern Miss, you know, getting around and getting everybody to the ball. You know, uh, Mo Williams rushing 1,400 yards, you know, I mean, you, you, that's something you have to worry about for any defensive uh, football team. You know, us being uh, highly ranked in de the defense categories, you know, we have, it, this is going to be a goal for us to stop Mo Williams. Well, UT-UK won't be the only college football game of interest of all fans, players, and coaches alike on Saturday. Notre Dame travels to Air Force. An Irish loss puts Tennessee in the Alliance Bowl picture and a possible trip to the Orange or Sugar Bowl. A Notre Dame win and the Vols are Citrus Bowl bound. Coach Fulmer was asked whether he'd watch the Notre Dame game Saturday and about the currently cloudy postseason picture. I prefer a playoff. <laughs> Probably right now. Yeah, yeah. From from the scenario that we're in, you know, it's, it's worked out. It's terribly unfair. Uh, in my opinion, you know, and I'd say any other Tennessean's opinion that follows Tennessee football. Uh, but it's not something I can do anything about again, so 
other than fuss about it a little bit. There's nothing else to do but go about our business and go to work. We'll get back in time to watch part of it, if, as I told the other guys, if my daughters don't have something better to do. So, you know, I can't affect that game. Coach referring to the Notre Dame and Air Force game. The Vols and Cats get it on at 12.30 on JP Sports. In fact, Jefferson Pilot is televising three SEC games this Saturday, and WKXT will carry one of them. Not mean you get to take this year, but as it stands now, the Volunteers travel to Lexington on Saturday, trying to stay in the hunt for a major bowl bid. Saturday, Tennessee plays at Kentucky. Most of the time when you travel to Lexington, it's tough, but it's really good memories for Eric Lane. You see the Tennessee fullback scored his first touchdown there a couple of years ago, and now he's happy to be headed back. so excited, and I, uh, it was a dream. It was a dream come true. I never imagined it. I'm like, here I am, some 18-year-old kid up from New Jersey, and uh, you know, I, I just scored my first collegiate touchdown at a Division I university, so it was, it was amazing. Lane has turned out to be a very valuable member of this Tennessee team. Of course, he wanted to be a tailback when he first came to the Volunteers, but now he's fit nicely into that fullback slot, and he's contributed. He doesn't get the headlines, but he's just concerned about doing his job and he getting a chance to play. play. And, uh, you know, I ended up staying over the summers and working hard and trying to improve myself and get better, and, and it's paid off. You know, I started out in the special teams, and I was, my first was uh, asked to do it, and I'm like, you know, special teams, I didn't come here to play special teams. But that really helped me because uh, by playing special teams, they gave me the opportunity to get my foot in the door to start playing offensively. Lane will try and contribute again on Saturday, and the Volunteers take on the Wildcats. You can see the game here on Channel 10. Our coverage starts at noon with football Saturday. Nationally improved defense isn't backing down from the SEC's best running back. The Vols facing Big Mo this weekend. Mo Williams leading the Southeastern Conference in rushing. No need to whisper. It's no secret what the Wildcats will do coming up on Saturday. I wouldn't be surprised if this would be his last year in, in the collegiate uh, game. And uh, I mean, he has a good chance of definitely scoring a lot of points for their team. And he has def definitely have a good chance of having a lot of yards against our defense. Hey, Tennessee has best, one of the best uh, rushing defenses in the conference. Should be an interesting matchup up there in Lexington, American. It is a solid defense. You know, Coach Mike Archer has been around for a long time and uh, um, definitely a highly respected coordinator. And uh, it's a matter of um, our defense getting the ball for us, stopping Mo Williams, you know, um, one of the best backs in the conference. And uh, it's a matter of us executing a lot better than we had the past two weeks and um, putting some points on the board. Volunteers in the Wildcats Saturday at Commonwealth Stadium. Volunteer. Our team. Uh, has revealed who who we are by the way they fought through everything they've had to. So I'm very proud of them, and I want to finish strongly, and we're working hard to get ready for, for Tennessee. The thing that's most impressive about them is exactly what Phil Fulmer cited when he talked to us a minute ago, and that's their team speed on defense. Tennessee has uh, built its program to the point where now they are perennial, perennially a top 10 uh, type of team. On the baseball, yes. And they're, they're not both. Werfel is deserving and may win it. And it wouldn't be a travesty if he did. But for my money, the best quarterback in the Southeastern Conference is Peyton Manning. Jimmy Hines. I would vote Peyton Manning as well. And to me, it is a very close call. Uh, but I think Manning has done so much. I think, I think Werfel is somewhat a product of the system. Not to take away from how good he is. It's great. He was able to pick on some teams that weren't very good on defense and run up some huge numbers. But when he played against teams that had a decent defense or good defense, he didn't do anything. He had 125 Lenny. yards against Tennessee and 74 against Florida. So he had less than 200 yards. Lenny gets votes as SEC most valuable player? As MVP? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and sometimes it just takes people a while to figure that out. Manning did not play that well against Memphis. In fact, it was probably the worst game he's played at Tennessee. But it, it really didn't make any sense to have booed him. Uh, the guy came in, and really he outworked Brandon Stewart. He's not more talented than Brandon Stewart, but he outworked him, and he knew the system more than Brandon Stewart did, and he deserved to start ahead of Brandon Stewart. But here's the thing, Tom. Brandon Stewart is a wonderful talent, yes, and I is. think he's going to do a wonderful job for Texas A&M. He'll be a star down there. And a guy in my office who was Brandon Stewart, Brandon Stewart, Brandon Stewart all the way, says today when he sees this article, Brandon Stewart, who needs him? <laughs> he redecorated in orange and white from bottom to top. We just call this our decoration tree. We want to make it traditional for this kind of tree every, every football season, and then after the Christmas holiday, we'll have a real Christmas tree uh, come Christmas. 
it greets you as you come into Dr. Avery's office. Orange ribbons, ball buttons, and even orange and white lights. The patients particularly have enjoyed seeing this tree with all of its ornaments. And of course, all of them are big orange fans, except maybe a few that sometimes come up from Alabama and down from Kentucky. You still worked on them anyway. We worked on them, yeah, that's right. Coming to a doctor's office is not fun. Yeah. <laughs> so with this makes it a little fun. And better be careful when you come into this doctor's office. It's contagious. In fact, the entire staff dresses in orange and white every Friday. If I don't show up in orange and white on Friday, I have to go back home and change. And so we get into the spirit of things, and by Saturday, we're, we're really into it. Everybody in here is a ball fan, right? Absolutely. <laughs> they can't work here if they're not. <laughs> That's number one on, on the resume. Or you, you know, you are a ball fan or you're not, and then we fill our application. Yes or no? <laughs> our little contribution. What do you think Shannon would say if he came down the chimney and saw a tree like that? Go balls! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, ho, ho. Dr. Um, Raymond and Smokey, go get them both. <laughs> and Merry Christmas, right? And Merry Christmas. That's right. And Happy New Year and wishing for a major bowl game. Scott Finley, 6, Eyewitness Sports. You got to love the holiday season. And, uh, you know, Rick and Lori, I haven't got our tree yet at the uh, household yet, but I can't wait to put on my hat, my gloves, grab the axe, and... Yeah. Go down to the basement and pull the plastic tree out of the box <laughs> and put it up in the living room. It, it gets you in the spirit of the season. That's right. It? Oh, <laughs> thank, thank you, Jim. You, you know, six. we have some of those. For your starter and team co-captain, Bubba Miller. Tennessee won't let Miller play in tomorrow's game with Kentucky. He wears number 71 right here. That's because UT says Miller may have violated NCAA rules by accepting extra benefits in his freshman and sophomore years. UT did not disclose the nature of the extra benefits, but they have applied to the NCAA for Miller's reinstatement for the Vanderbilt game next week. The ball's left for Kentucky prior to the announcement Miller would not play. The university isn't offering any comment until after Miller's case is resolved by the NCAA. Miller will miss his final game with the Wildcats, a rivalry game. The Vols have won 10 straight seasons. The winner gets to hoist the beer barrel and look for one of the big ball offensive or defensive linemen to carry that keg off the field after tomorrow's game. Well, we, we haven't talked about it much lately, but, um, you know, I, I guess it'll either be me or Steve or Scott or maybe Deron. I don't, I don't think Deron can pick it up. <laughs> Two years ago, ball lineman Paul Yadkowski carried that thing off, and he did it all by himself. Guy didn't need any help. Big guys do that stuff. And we'll enroll it. Head coach Ray Goff. That word from Atlanta team, Tennessee football. And so minus Bubba Miller, the football ball should be just arriving in Lexington at this hour as the team gets set to battle Kentucky for the old beer barrel. Coach Fulmer putting his guys through one final practice this afternoon here in town before bussing up to Kentucky. The team is not scheduled to work out at Commonwealth Stadium. The coach pleased with what he's seen here in Knoxville this week. They had the open day to start preparing, but came out Monday and had a lot of uh, vinegar about ourselves, and we've prepared well. I think we'll be ready for Kentucky. Especially on the defensive side of the ball with uh, Mo Williams coming at you tomorrow. Mo Williams is a tremendous challenge, not just for our defensive team, but for our football team. We've got to keep the ball offensively and score points. And we feel like we need to take advantage of the times we get the ball because they have a ball control offense. And I feel like you know, field position will be important. And if we get some turn, if uh, our defense gets some turnovers, we need to take advantage of it. Something we haven't done the past two games. And with 266 yards passing tomorrow, Peyton Manning can move into fourth place on UT's all-time passing list. He should be able to accomplish that. And the Vols, favored by almost four touchdowns, should win their 11th straight over the Cats. Kickoff tomorrow is set for 12:30. Tennessee, Kentucky isn't the only tonight. Or by Jefferson Pilot Sports. Deploy. Talk about the concerns about stopping Mo Williams. Well, it's a huge concern. Everybody's had some difficulty doing it. That we uh, obviously have made that a priority and. Uh, Kentucky's a good football team doing other things. Our defense has its work cut out for us. We need to keep him off the field. We talked to Coach Fulmer about who will take Bubba Miller's spot. He said Trey Peterson gets the start tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Kentucky Wildcats, where there's all the talk, will Mo Williams stay next year? What about Bill Curry? Could this be his last game as the Kentucky coach? The Wildcats trying to end on a good note against Tennessee as they battle for the beer barrel tomorrow. The Kentucky Wildcats had one of their best games of the year last week. 
beating Cincinnati 33-14. Mo Williams had 272 yards, but the victory still didn't erase the disappointment of another losing season in the bluegrass. No doubt there's plenty of pressure on Bill Curry and the Wildcats tomorrow against Tennessee. In fact, some people in Lexington are saying Curry's fate as Kentucky coach could be decided next week. But Curry, through all the injuries and all the adversity this year, still says he's very proud of this football team. This is the best four and six I've ever been a part of because they have scratched and fought. And if a walk-on had to play, then by golly, he played. If a true freshman had to give up his red shirt year and run out there in the ninth game, he went out there with his teeth gritted and did the best he could. And that's happened over and over. We've changed positions. We've taken linebackers and made them ends. We've taken safeties and made them corners. We've taken quarterbacks and made them receivers. And every to a man, they've been unselfish. And that is probably the greatest lesson that football teaches of all. Kentucky has had 11 starters miss games at one time or another this season. Some of those starters, though, are back for the Tennessee game. But do the Wildcats have enough to slow down UT, even with those starters back? And so we'll see if the volunteers can roll over the Cats tomorrow. 12.30 is the kickoff. You can see it on Channel 10. Our coverage starts, Mike, with football Saturday at noon, live from Lexington. All right, Bob, we'll talk to you again at 11. Okay. All right, Bob. Thanks very the much. The same record to the last 12 as Florida and Florida State. John Makovic, perhaps <laughs> in a must-win season. Lee enjoys that, answering some critics. Now, whatever game you watch on TV today, crawl up real close to your set and keep an eye on the men in the middle, toiling away at football's least... That's the way we performed in that game, and I'd like to have two or three plays back in the Arkansas game. Uh, but other than that... They're, uh, they're going to play. I mean, you expect them to play hard, and... Um, some years they have and some years they haven't, but you have to expect them to play hard and you have to um, expect your team to play well also. It's getting the ball for us, stopping Mo Williams, you know, um, one of the best backs in the conference, and uh, just a matter of us executing a lot better than we have the past two weeks and um, putting some points on the board. He's a, he's a big back, he, he runs hard, and uh, you know, of course they run him a lot, you know, he's had three, three games, I think, with 250 or more yards. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome live to Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, where today the Tennessee Volunteers and the Kentucky Wildcats get set to play for the 91st time. They're playing for the old beer barrel today, which has stayed in Knoxville the last 10 years. Last time Kentucky won in this series was 1984, and of course the last two years, Tennessee has outscored the Wildcats 100 to nothing. A lot of stories around today's game. One, what about the future of Kentucky coach Bill Curry? Lots of rumors are circulating. Perhaps this might be his last game with the Wildcats. And also the big story that hit the Tennessee camp yesterday, the fact that Bubba Miller has been declared ineligible for this game for uh, allegedly receiving illegal gifts from boosters and other supporters. And that happened over the last two years. So Bubba Miller is at home, not in the Tennessee offensive line. He had started 45 games for Tennessee during his career, but not here today. Hopefully, they, Tennessee wants to have Bubba back for next week. Uh, and of course, Bubba Miller is one of the co-captains of this football team. Another story is the weather. Usually when Tennessee and Kentucky play, it could be snowing or sleeting. Right now, there's just a stiff breeze blowing from the north. There's a threat of rain, but no rain so far this morning. So it looks like pretty good football weather if you can contend with the wind here at Commonwealth Stadium. Kentucky, of course, 4-6, and six, no chance for a bowl or a winning season. For the Tennessee Volunteers, there's a lot to play for today. And Mike Keith outlines what all's going for the Volunteers today. During the last two years, Tennessee has beaten the Kentucky Wildcats by a combined score of 100 to nothing. The Vols go into today's contest with a number four national ranking and an 8-1 and record. With Tennessee's high-octane offense at smash-mouth defense, the Big Orange can finish this season on cruise control. Well, maybe not. You know, when you play a lot of teams um, that, that, that you're um, better than on paper, um, they, they expect you to come into the game underestimating them, and uh, they feel like they should have some kind of emotional edge on you, but... Um, We've been able you know, to get up for, the, for those games in the past, and I, I hope this year will be no different. Going into this football game, we obviously uh, have great respect for Kentucky. We don't want anybody to think for one minute that we're taking this, uh, this game lightly. It's uh, very important to us, and I'm sure very important to them. Several school records are also at stake with just two games to play. Peyton Manning needs just 343 more aerial yards to surpass Andy Kelly's single-season passing record. Junior Joey Kent is also close to breaking several records at wide receiver U. He needs just five more catches to break T.D. Woods' single-season reception record of 58. Kent's 17 career T.D. receptions 
just two shy of breaking Corey Fleming's career mark of 18. Jay Graham is the other ball that might etch his name onto Tennessee lore. The junior tailback from Concord, North Carolina, needs just 211 yards rushing to gain the most yards for a ball during a season. The old mark was set by Johnny Jones, 1290, back in 1984. So Tennessee has a lot to play for these next two weeks. Records are waiting to be broken. Bowl scenarios are still uncertain. And the Big Orange has a 38-1 mark in November that dates back to 1985. For Football Saturday, I'm Mike Key. Thanks, Mikey. Outlines what's on the line for Tennessee, what's on the line for Kentucky. If you remember just a couple of weeks ago, the Wildcats were 3-3. Three and three. They had Vanderbilt coming in. Uh, they had Cincinnati, so they had a pretty good shot at a bowl game, but they lost to Vanderbilt, and that really set the spiral downward. Last week, Kentucky bounced back to beat Cincinnati, but maybe a little bit too little too late. There's an old saying that uh, losses don't get coaches fired. Losses with empty seats get coaches fired, and today they're about to maybe 15,000 or so here at Commonwealth Stadium. Still coming in, but it's going to be a small crowd for this Tennessee-Kentucky game. Kentucky's been banged up all season long. We had a chance to sit down yesterday with Coach Bill Curry and ask him about his football team and the injury situation. He's gotten some of the starters back, but still, it's an undermanned Kentucky team that goes up against this uh, powerful Tennessee team today. We may be uh, at a greater strength than we've been in a long, long time. And I'm so proud of this team, no matter what, because they're going to fight all four quarters. And what we said to them, we built a decent football team. It was decimated, and the challenge that I put for them is, do you have guts enough to build another one during this season? And they answered, struggle a week or two or three, and then last week we came through with the right kind of performance. So we need to improve that much more again. Talk about Mo Williams, just the things he's accomplished this year, and, and how well he's played for all season long, because he's been probably your most consistent player. Well, we've had some linemen that have also been consistent. Uh, and Mo is really smart because he goes over. Not only does he thank them and give them credit, he hugs them during the game. If you watch him on the sideline, this guy's really smart. And an old lineman, you <laughs> appreciate that. He's system. circulating yeah. among the linemen. Uh, and he doesn't do it for political reasons. He's just really a sincere, very gifted, very dynamic football player. And uh, he's done a, a great job for us, not only of scoring touchdowns and running for tough yards, but of being an upbeat presence on the sideline. And then when he gets all the praise in the, in the post-game glow, he always gives credit to those big guys. And that is not only, like I said, that's not only true, but smart. Regardless of whether I am hired or fired, whether I'm coach of the year or bum of the year, and it's usually one or the other. Um, I stopped worrying about that stuff some time back, and I really get my joy from watching irresponsible, knuckle-headed teenage males like I was once become men who say, hey, I'm responsible for my education. I'm responsible to do what I'm supposed to for this team. And when a whole group of them come together, then you have a great team. And that is really fun, no matter what else is going on. So these Wildcats today trying to muster up enough to pull off a major upset today as Kentucky trying to end a long string of frustration at the hands of the Tennessee Volunteers and win one for their coach today. We'll continue live from Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington on Football Saturday in just a moment. These Heisman finalists both play on reason everybody. We're live in Lexington, Kentucky today, just moments before the Tennessee-Kentucky game, a game you can see here on Channel 10 in just a few moments. Of course, today it's a very busy day in the SEC. Besides this Tennessee-Kentucky game, there are a couple of other pretty important matchups, including a big one down in Auburn today. Warm-ups here in Lexington. Kent uh, Tennessee just went in. Kentucky concluding things here in just a moment as the Volunteers and the Wildcats get set to battle it out for the beer barrel today. We'll continue with Football Saturday live from Commonwealth Stadium in just a moment. In Lexington, it was uh, supposed to rain today. So far, no rain in the area, but it is breezy and chilly here as the Volunteers and the Wildcats getting set to play. There's a big game going on in the Knoxville area. In fact, Carson Newman is back in the NCAA Division II playoffs. The first and last night, Rick Pitino's Kentucky Wildcat basketball team had an exhibition game. Ron Mercer, of course, the guy Tennessee really went after in the starting lineup for Tennessee Volunteers today and really mess up this bowl alliance. There are a couple of other games today that could national anthem with the Wildcat band.
Commonwealth Stadium. They're expecting a crowd of over 30,000 here to watch the Wildcats and the Kentucky Wildcats. It's the final home game for these Kentucky seniors, and they try and end it on a good note today, trying to pull off the big upset against the Tennessee Volunteers. Stay tuned. We'll have the game coming up with you for in just a moment. Tim Brando, James Lofts, and I will have all the action here from Commonwealth Stadium, and then, of course, live post-game reaction following the game at 6 o'clock on Action 10 Sports. Thanks for being with us for Football Saturday. Stay tuned now as the Kentucky Wildcats take on the Tennessee Volunteers coming up next on Channel 10. supremacy in the bordering states of Tennessee and Kentucky. The Volunteers have carried off the spoils in the rivalry lately, and who will rule supreme in the border war today? Stay tuned, we'll find out. football stretch run it's the lee sec game of the week from the land of the commonwealth in kentucky the wildcats play host to number four tennessee we're live from commonwealth stadium hello everyone i am tim brando and by my side we welcome a guy that has just a few yards and receptions with the national football league james lofton welcome to the sec well thank you we're going to see two of the better sec offensive performers today Mo Williams, the Kentucky running back. I think he's going to be All-American. He's had three 200-yard ball games already. Does his best running in between the tackles. And when you say Tennessee, obviously you think of Peyton Manning. Guy has size, speed, strength, and that's just his offensive line. Two great receivers to throw to in Kent and Nash. If he needs to hand the ball off to a thousand-yard rusher in Jay Graham. Now you start talking about the importance of this game for Tennessee. Well, they're hopeful of making it into the Bowl Alliance. I've said this many times. They're the best team with no chance of winning the Southeastern Conference. So what they need is help from Air Force against Notre Dame. Because if Notre Dame should lose, that means Tennessee could move up into the Alliance Bowl games. As for Bill Curry, well, I'm sure by now you know about Ray Goff. There will be a press conference later today. Word out of the Georgia area is that he is gone as head football coach. Clearly scrutinized here at Kentucky, Bill Curry. I've talked with a number of people here surrounding the athletic program, and I think it's safe to say that he needs to be competitive today to help his case to keep his job. Well, I talked to Bill Curry earlier in the week, and, you know, last year was a disastrous season for him. They had a death of a player. His wife was threatened. She said, honey, we're not going to be run out of town. On top of all of that, a 1 in 10 season. But Bill Curry still feels like he has work to do here at Kentucky, and he's ready for the challenge. Much like Ray Goff, his program has been beset with injuries all year long. He hopes to be competitive today in the battle for the beer barrel, measuring better than 90 years steep in tradition. Today's Lee Apparel SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Lee Apparel. With new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By Sonic and Dr. Pepper, who invite you to drive in for a change. By CarQuest Auto Parts Stores. For the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492- the Kentucky Wildcats making their way out onto the field here at Commonwealth Stadium and a tremendous crowd making it over from Knoxville, which is not that far away for today's game. And not that far away from the beer barrel is our comrade Bob Kessling. Bob? Tim, today Tennessee heavily favored in the contest, but they had the beer barrel and the cafeteria in the UT Athletic Dorm all week long. So when the players came in for breakfast or lunch or dinner, they saw the beer barrel, knowing this Kentucky team could pull off an upset today just to remind them how important the game is today. But the Tennessee team was rocked when they got off the bus yesterday. They found out that Bubba Miller, Tennessee's captain, offensive guard, has been declared ineligible for receiving allegedly illegal gifts from boosters at Tennessee. They're going to seek reinstatement, but he will not be in the lineup today. Today, and he's made 45 straight starts for Tennessee. 
And of course, another key for Kentucky today, can they stop Tennessee, especially early? The Volunteers have scored touchdowns on their first possession, 12 of the last 14 games. And the emotion of this game for Kentucky. Can they get up? Bill Curry's job might be on the line. And so the beer barrel today is at stake. Maybe so the future of Bill Curry as the Kentucky coach. You know, it got its start back in 1925 when a couple of Wildcat followers wanted to come up with something symbolic. They actually wanted to use uh, old whiskey, but uh, that was during the times of Prohibition, and they were even politically correct back then and decided to opt for the beer barrel. You see the weather? Unless you can get more in a beer That's barrel. That's right. The temperature is 51 degrees. We're going to have winds gusting at better than 25 miles per hour before the day is done. Kentucky has that win. They won the toss, selected to defer. Sean Summers is back deep to receive for Tennessee. And he's joined back there by Terry Fair. Ryan Savinsky will get this one underway. The senior out of Lexington's Henry Clay High School. It comes down to Summers. Beyond the 25-yard line is Summers. Reggie Rust down there to make the stop after a 14-yard return for Summers. Peyton Manning, what a remarkable story he has been. Look at the touchdown to interception ratio. He has uh, blossomed so very much from his freshman to his sophomore year and is only 19 years of age. He was a high school senior at Newman in New Orleans at only 17 years of age. Heisman Hopeful brings up his volunteers on first down. Out of the odd formation. Looking long and it's dropped by Nash. Lehman Boyd was there to provide coverage and out of that eye formation you'll see the play action boot. That is the play they go with most often and that's the one uh, that they opted for there. You see the rest of that offense. Graham the outstanding running back. And up front that line without Bubba Miller as mentioned by Bob Kessling earlier. You mentioned Bubba Miller out, and Trey Peterson will be the starter. And it's not like he hasn't played before. He started five ball games at left guard at the beginning of this season, so he's back in the starting lineup for today's ball game. Three wide receiver set for Tennessee. Quick pitch, and there's the cutback by Graham. Up to about the 35-yard line, gain of nearly eight, and the defense for. And he's going in the game for them today. He needs to get up and be able to force quick. You just saw Jay Gray on that run in the last play. Third down and a long two for Manning. Pass is complete to the 40 for a first down to Joey Kent. George Harris comes up quickly to pop him. The Wildcats have been beset with injuries in that secondary. Defensive coordinator Mike Archer would tell you that the loss of Stephen Hall and Van Hiles to a concussion has really crippled this Kentucky defense which generally makes the opposition go the distance and not give up the big play. First and 10, Tennessee from the 41. Play fake. Incomplete. That one was tipped by Schellenberger, 49. Knock it away from Nash coming right across the middle. Not exactly the vertical leap that one of Rick Petito's players might have. Just enough. Just enough. Nothing going for Graham and Dante T the penetration to help force that play. He gets some help from Lamont Smith, 45. He's a lot faster than anybody who Tennessee has up and down that line. There you see what Tennessee has usually done. Only South Carolina and Arkansas kept them from scoring on their first possession this year. Manning. Out of the pocket. Loops it long. Intended for Marcus Nash. And the Kentucky defense holes and that believe me is rare and worth some applause from their contingency here deep waiting in his 30th Bain has had trouble with distance this year but not with this one and against the wind Sanford in trouble and Mayo back at the 18 yard line so against the wind Larry Binion gets all of it Ronnie Pillow a reserve running back number three was down there to make the stop a 47 yard punt and a two-yard return for T.O. Sanders. Just underway at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, along with James Lofton and Bob Kessling, Tim Brando. Happy to have you with us. Billy Jack Haskins coming back off a shoulder separation. Has shown a great deal of courage, and he'll run a lot of the option today because of that. 
from the 17-yard line with Williams, the lone setback. Play action fake, and he's looping it for Coleman. Incomplete, and back there covering Corey Noel. Dan thought there had been some contact, and Bill Curry also believes there was contact. You're right, there was contact, but it's all the way up and down the field. They run the play action fake in the backfield. Good play action by Billy Jack, but there's no separation between Coleman and the defensive back any time during the route. That's a hard one for the officials to call. Spoken by one of the all-time greats at wide receiver. You wanted to see some separation, right? You need some separation. You need to get him away from that white jersey. Mo Williams off the right side. Fumbled the football. It appears as if he's going to be ruled down prior to the fumble. Which could be a very big break for Kentucky. Older player, but he started every ball game for the Wildcats this season. Third down and nine. Haskins over the middle to Antonio O'Farrell. Complete for a first down at the 30-yard line. And that's the senior, Deron Jenkins, the only senior back there starting for this ball club. Loves to play one-on-one -on -one coverage. He even uses that stand-up stance like Deion Sanders. Williams picks up two, maybe three yards, going off the right side. And as advertised, Deron Jenkins comes over to make the stop, the senior out of St. Louis. I would think that Kentucky is already pleased with what has happened in the first series and now this series offensively because they've records just about every time he touches the ball here at Kentucky and is the lone setback here. Straight drop for Haskins looking outside to Tucker. And that's a first down beyond the 40 to the 42. First and 10 with the ball at the 42 for Kentucky. Williams, big hole, gets five. As that Kentucky offensive line Plows through Tennessee's defensive front. Ron Green and Raymond Austin collaborate on the stuff. Now that Kevin Coleman in motion. Tucker is the receiver to the lower portion of the screen. Oh, Williams. Nice piece of ad-libbing by Williams for another Kentucky first down. We've been anticipating rain here, but apparently it has held off, and that's good news for Kentucky. For Yeast, he drops the touchdown pass. Craig Yeast wide open by four steps beyond the nearest Tennessee defender. You know, that, that's one that's painful for me to watch because Yeast, state champion, freshman, 400-meter champion, open, wide open. You don't get much more open than this. The ball is thrown a little bit to his right shoulder, but there's nothing he could do to bring that ball in once it hits the ground. Leonard Little made Haskins pay. A little hello, how are you doing? And I'll be back from Leonard Little. Eight quarterback sacks this year. Second and ten. Haskins. And that one batted down. Tennessee does a lot of that through the course of the game. And a couple of interceptions off tips, you'll recall, against Steve Tannehill in a game we televised on Jefferson Pilot Sports a few weeks back. Well, Billy Jack Haskins lists himself at six feet, one inches, but I was in the locker room, and I know I have on my 10-inch pumps, but that guy is under six feet tall. You know, he has that shoulder injury, and he showed me a pad that the trainers had given him to wear for the ball game, but he said, I can't wear that because every time I try and turn my shoulder to the left to look, my helmet, my face mask hits my shoulder. You know, James, he's uh, doing remarkably well for a quarterback who was held out of practice all of this week. But he had no snaps during the course of preparation this week. Quick drop again, and there's the pressure. And that's what Tennessee will do to you. Jesse Sanders gets through the linebacker, who has clawed his way back into the starting lineup since that South Carolina game, senior out of Sebring, Florida. You know, Tim, we met with the coaches last night, and they assured us the one thing they weren't going to do was blitz the quarterback. <laughs> this looks like a good blitz for me. They bring six rushers, and they just overpower the Kentucky offensive line, and they come up with the sack and stop Kentucky's drive. But a good drive for Kentucky to get it away from their end zone. Jimmy Carter punting it away. With the wind, angles are high for Summers, who takes it, and it's quickly knocked out of bounds. Down there to get him, Littleton Ward, a cornerback on the defensive end that has been pressed into duty with all of the injuries. 9.05 remaining in the opening quarter, Kentucky 
misses a golden opportunity on a drop pass. Southeastern Conference football on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Only two weeks remaining in the regular season of college football. It has indeed been a pleasure for us to bring you these games in the Southeastern Conference. Along with James Lofton and Bob Kessling on the sidelines, Tim Brando, happy to have you with us. Tennessee's second possession from their 24-yard line. Peyton Manning checking off at the line of scrimmage. Rusk is coming on the blitz, and there's the pass complete. Holding on for dear life to Joey Kent is Keo Wilson. Peyton Manning has historically been a quarterback that most defensive coordinators are scared to death of blitzing. He is very wise back there, tutored well, both at home and in Knoxville. Yeah, but Dad has always said that I'm going to let the coaches coach him, but obviously from watching your dad being around professional football, growing up watching, he knows how to play the game. He's been coached very well at Tennessee. Second down and three, Chester Ford is in the slot, and it's Graham off the right side. Bouncing off a couple of tacklers. Finally brought down by Rusk. There's Poole right there on Dante Key, and Dante Key, like we said, is undersized, and his best chance is going to be on an outside rush where he can use his speed. First down and 10, split backs this time. Quick out. Taken in by Tyler. That's another freshman receiver we're seeing today as Lehman Boyd ushers him out of bounds. Greg Tyler, freshman from Baltimore. He, along with Andy McCullough, Benji Schuler, and Maurice Staley, will all see time today behind Ken and Nash. And that's a scary thought when you look at this guy and someone misses a tackle, because this guy is the fastest out of all of their receivers. I talked to Pat Washington, the wide receiver coach, before the ball game. And he said, well, we've got so many guys, I thought I was going to get the red shirt somewhere, but they're all so good, they have to play now. First and 10 at the 46. Manning with keep in his face. Is wide open Joey Kent. Out of bounds at the 32. And there's an example of the poise of a Peyton Manning. Because Dante Key was coming right after it. You know, when you bootleg like this, a lot of quarterbacks get ruffled when they see a defensive lineman out there who's supposed to go with the flow. Not Peyton Manning. Gives him a little head fake with the ball. Goes up in the air. And once you get that guy up in the air, he can't move. Once he goes up in here, he's dead. Peyton Manning knows that, completes the pass downfield. They mark it at the 32-yard line out of the eye formation. This time, the running play off the left side. Wide open for Jay Graham. And he manages the 17-yard line. Lehman Boyd makes the stop, number 15. The junior out of Bowling Green, Kentucky, at strong safety. Watch Schellenberger come up trying to make the tackle, and he just overruns the play a little bit. What he really needs to learn is, is where his additional support is coming from. If you're the middle linebacker, your job is to stay in the middle and make that hit. Philip Fulmer, in his fourth year as head coach, looks on. And you look at the numbers inside the red zone, they have been outstanding. Only Florida and the SEC is better. Eric Lane, number five, with his first carry of the day, the junior out of East Orange, New Jersey. Imagine the Gators who are playing Vandy today. They've only kicked three field goals all season. I mean, Spurrier just doesn't take three. They don't need a field goal kicker. <laughs> They're good enough where they could just go for two after every touchdown. By the way, Dave Rowe is working that game today along with Paul Kennedy. Some other areas of the Southeastern Conference picking up that telecast. We'll no doubt be keeping you up to date on the score in that ball game. Off the right side, Graham again. Very nimble back there. Schellenberger aids in the tackle. He's a cutback runner, goes against the grain, and then will cut back on you many times. Very shifty, the junior out of Concord, North Carolina. Well, he got a good block that time from Eric Lane, the fullback, and they let Eric have a, a carry before that play, before you go in and, and knife down with a big defensive lineman. He told us last night that his offensive linemen are so good, it's a storied program for offensive linemen. They'll come back and tell him which way he should cut. Oh, yeah. You know, the offensive linemen tell you that anyway. Double tight ends. Manning gives 
himself some room and then throws it away. Again, some pressure coming there from Schlegel, 97, the junior out of Harahan, Louisiana. And Manning knew right away what he was going to do. He couldn't find anyone. Unload. You look at the career numbers on Peyton Manning, and th think about it. Bobby Scott, who was Archie Manning's backup with the New Orleans Saints, is about only one pass away from seeing Archie's son pass him by. There's that cutback ability. Graham burrows down to about the two. You know, getting back to those career touchdown numbers, there's one number that was not up there. Peyton is tied with his dad for the number of touchdown <laughs> passes in the collegiate career. Archie to 31 while he was at Southern Mississippi. Old Miss. Yeah. I believe, changed the school. <laughs> I believe uh, one area that uh, Peyton would rather not break one of his dad's records would be in running the football in. You know, I'm, I'm sure Archie has more running touchdowns. I don't think he's going to have to worry about that <laughs> because he has so much talent around him. He doesn't have to worry about running the ball in. Three tight ends. Manning trying to loop it in there. Drop. One official had touchdown. And then as Pfeiffer hit the deck, just before he reached the back of the end zone, the ball fell loose. You know, that was about the only way that Peyton Manning could have gotten this ball in there. Because Pfeiffer starts turning around almost before he's run his route. He has his hand up as if he, as if he is open, but there's a defensive player right next to him. And Graham jumps up so high that he has to get the ball over him. It's as he's bringing the ball down. From the original angle, you could see that when he brought the ball to the chest, that's when he lost possession. The field goal of 20 yards from Jeff Hall is good. And Tennessee has to settle for three. A couple of missed opportunities for both teams in this game. Volunteers lead it. We'll be back after this word from your local SEC station. Tennessee leading 3-0 on a Jeff Hall field goal of 20 yards. Keo Sanford second in all-time Kentucky numbers for kickoff return yards. 1,230 he and George Harris await. The kick from Jeff Hall. Out of Winchester, Tennessee, same hometown as Philip Fulmer, the head coach of the Volunteers. 5-18 now remaining in the first quarter, and it comes up to the up back. Number 51, Bob Holmberg, a linebacker, wraps that ball up and has an 11-yard return and gives Kentucky quality field position to open this drive. It looks like Bob may be keeping that ball also. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, you looked at those numbers on Keo Sanford. It's amazing. He's only a sophomore right now to get 1,200 1200 yards already in his career. So that number is going to go out the window in a little while. Mm -hmm. Billy Jack Haskins brings up his troops at the 35-yard line. Nothing doing there for Mo Williams. Leonard Little, the first to get there. Defensive coordinator John Chavis told us uh, last night that there's only one player on the defense that's any faster than Leonard Little. Well, one of the things you want to do as a defensive player, you want to get your hands on the offensive man. That's exactly what he did. And he was in control right there. He was controlling, leaning, and he got into the backfield. I don't think Williams thought he would get off the blocker that quickly because he saw the blue on the white, and then all of a sudden he saw Little right in his face. Only Deron Jenkins is faster than Little on that Tennessee defense. Here's the play fake off the option, and wide open is Coleman. The freshman sets free inside the 10. Mo Williams. Mo Williams. Mo touchdown. Kentucky takes the lead. So you run out of your shoe for your first score of the day. 
Schellenberger comes around the center and around the guard who is pulling, and he gets a great block. Brandon Jackson, number 25, and Schellenberger, number 45, 49, get key blocks on that touchdown run. Over half of their scores have come via Mo Williams. And again, as he so oftentimes does, breaks the initial tackle. That's what separates him from the rest. His 15th rushing touchdown. One blow can't stop Mo. Some pilot sports coverage of the Southeastern Conference concludes next week in the interstate rivalry between the Vanderbilt Commodores and these same volunteers. 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. We look forward to you joining us for that game. Brian Savinsky will kick off for Kentucky. Terry Fair is back deep at his five-yard line. So Kentucky operating with the wind in this quarter does have one touchdown. Could have two at this stage. Let's go down to Bob Kessling. Bob? Good timing for Kentucky today. They issued this full-color poster of Mo Williams, hyping him for Hall All-Star consideration, and he deserves it. On the back of the poster, list all his credentials and what he's accomplished so far this season and in his Kentucky career. It's been the University of Kentucky, so it's only natural for son to follow mom back to school. First down, 10, Tennessee. Volunteers go with three wideouts. Graham. And this is an inspired group from the Big Blue. I didn't aid him on the tackle. Kyler has come in at one wide out at the bottom of your screen, number 80. Second and 11. Play fake. Manning shoots it. Picked off. Lehman Boyd has it. It was intended for Marcus Nash and the Wildcats. Now have the ball at the Tennessee 35. And after 123 consecutive completions coming in, is going to be tough on him. Haskins. And that could boot open to O'Farrell. And assembling both Elliot Uzelak, a former head coach as his offensive coordinator, and Mike Archer, one of the brightest minds as a defensive coordinator, now with this Kentucky staff. This is a far different staff than he's had in prior years. Philip Fulmer looks on, very concerned with what's going on here in the first quarter. Second down and two. Williams. That's the first down inside the 25 to the 23. Leonard Little making the stop. You know, we're also seeing some change-ups from Kentucky on their offense. In that last set, they had, of course, Mo Williams, a single back, but they used three wide receivers and one tight end. And what that does is it spreads the defense out, and it actually gives Williams more room to run. The only thing that they don't have when they don't have that tight end on the backside is they don't have backside protection for the cutback. So it's important for Mo when he has the three wide receiver set, to hit the hole quickly, don't cut back. 10, ball at the 23. Coleman in motion. Williams inside the 20 near the 19-yard line. After Antonio O'Farrell made that reception, a player so back, he hit the deck. He's down on the sidelines on the Kentucky side, injured. You know, the, the Kentucky linemen are just coming off. They're getting on them. You know, these aren't flashy runs. There's nothing pretty about a four-yard run. But what Mo Williams does is he wears you down. They're going to keep giving him the ball and giving it to him. If he can rush the ball 35 to 40 times today, they have a good chance of staying in this ball game with Tennessee. Six. Williams, there's a gap. But there's that closing he we talk about so often from Tennessee. Shane Burton playing that tackle spot, the senior out of Catalba, North Carolina, in there to make the tackle have 50 plus seconds of that win to work with third down and four and if they don't get a first down here it might be a good time to call timeout and use the wind at their back if they do need to kick a field goal Askins for Tucker trying that button hook move may have gotten him the first down that continues to run 20 seconds remaining sixth play of this drive after the Lehman Boyd interception Williams nothing doing still manages to get back to the line of scrimmage Jesse Sanders and Ron Green make the tackle and the quarter will come to an end it appears very seldom do you talk about a great run being one yard or back to the line of scrimmage but that was a great run just getting back to the line of scrimmage 
Bill Curry and his team playing expired football here in the Commonwealth before a near capacity crowd in the battle for the beer barrel. They lead through one. Rarely intercepted this year, throwing one over the middle, picked off by Lehman Boyd and the Wildcats, who have already dropped one sure score from Craig East, could be leading 14-3. Second down and ten as we open the second quarter. We've got a blitz coming here and an audible from Billy Jack. Goes to Williams. Doing his best to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Dory Noel makes the stop. As we take a look at the Lee Apparel first quarter stats. And Kentucky's passing yardage certainly noteworthy. I think the key stat, though, to the first quarter, eight minutes and 50 seconds time of possession for the Wildcats to just 6'10 of Tennessee. And that's what Kentucky has to do. They have got to dominate the time of possession and also move the chains as often as possible. You know, obviously, going against Tennessee, the one thing you want to do, you want to keep Peyton Manning on the sideline and getting cooler as the game progresses. Third and ten. Haskins, play fake to Williams. Sack, fumble, but recovered by Kentucky. And it's leaning, I believe, that landed on top of it. No, it's Barry Jones. 69, Barry Jones, the senior out of Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, allows the Wildcats at least a chance for three here. And another big play by Leonard Little and Steve White. Little coming straight up the middle, beating two men. Steve White beating his man, causing the fumble. They keep track of big plays, and these guys are running away with the big plays defensively for the Tennessee Volunteers this season. This will be a 33-yard attempt from Brian Johnson. Savinsky has struggled this year. This is into the wind, and good. 33 yards, but into a very brisk win, which we documented a few moments ago. Kentucky had it in their favor until the second quarter got underway. So that's a very important field goal for that young man. Johnson, just a sophomore out of Ripley, West Virginia. And I think nobody has ever walked on that K out of respect for the program. Bill Curry says you have to have pride in your program. Have pride and don't step on the K. Don't ever step on my K. Well, Brian Johnson probably could get away with it. That's his first field goal of the year. Now, Savinsky will kick off, and it's a pooch kick. Coming down to the 25-yard line, and again, an up back comes away with it. Al Wilson, and he's up to the 37-yard line. You know, when you're going to kick a ball like that that's high up in there, what you really need to do is you get one of your sprinters out there, and he can get down and almost intercept that ball. What's funny is the receiving team can call a fair catch in that instance if they're worried about someone getting down and hitting them because you can hit them before. It's not like a punt where you have to let them catch the ball. Philip Fulmer's team prides itself on run-pass balance. And now we'll see how Manning responds to that interception he threw moments ago. Quick hitch to Kyler, the freshman wide receiver. And the Kentucky defense responds. Littleton Ward, the left cornerback, sophomore out of Lexington, makes the stop. For the NCAA appeals process to come public, the president, Roger Sayers, and uh, Lynn Tuckett. That one tipped into the air and incomplete. Dante Key got a hand on that one. Theo Wilson nearly came away with it. Another near pick, and the pass was intended for Joey Kent. George Harris was almost able to break on that ball. Dante Key does a good job finding out where the pass is coming from and getting his hands up. And George Key, the senior, who's moved into the starting lineup for today, almost came up with a crucial interception. And George Harris, senior out of Oakland, California. He and Keel Wilson being called upon to play so much with the losses of guys like Carlos Collins, Van Hiles, and Stephen Hall. Third down and six. Manning to Kyler. That's the first down near midfield, right in front of Schellenberger, the middle linebacker, Littleton Ward, also in the area. It's an interesting time where the postseason is concerned, all of these rivalry games being played this weekend and next weekend. So much in the balance. Uh, Alabama is hopeful that by November 27th, they will have an idea as to the 
penalties being lightened from the NCAA. It could be scholarships or it could be a bowl chance this season. Graham wrapped up by Schlegel, 97. Gain of about two for Jay Graham. Kentucky does a good job in just making a mush of everything on the offensive line right there. They don't really give Graham a hole to run through. Everyone's there. They're able to get hands in on him and make a nice gang tackle and bring him down. Just underway second quarter. 12-25 and counting. Jim Brando, James Lofton, Bob Kessling from Lexington, Kentucky, where the Wildcats have a 10-3 lead over number four, Tennessee. Graham. Once he gets past that initial line of scrimmage, Harris makes the stops. George enjoying himself a little too much. Better watch out for that celebration rule after that tackle. And what's really important here is that Kentucky limits them. They get a nice hole to run through. Once again, Schellenberger picks the wrong side for the middle linebacker to start his charge. But George Harris does a good job in bringing down a very dangerous guy in the open field. Third down, a yard to go for Tennessee. Graham could pop it. Harris gets him again, corrals him at the 34, and more verbiage being passed between the two after the play. And Jay Graham letting him know about it. He wasn't happy with the way Harris stood on top of him after that tackle just to play a go. Graham shows his strength here. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage, and then he runs through Reggie Russ. Well, once again, there's George Harris, the senior, and I think Coach Curry has invited him over to the sideline. He had some words with him right before that lap, before the start of this play. He's kind of toned it down just a little bit. Early in the season, he would have been flagged. First and ten play play. Incomplete, intended for Kyler. And he ran right into the post. Well, that stings. Did that ever happen to you in your career? I wasn't that fast. <laughs> <laughs> and they have a slot formation to the left side. One receiver comes in, and he draws the free safety up. And that allows Kyler to get to the post. Ball just a little overthrown. Manny has this win behind him. On the 34-yard line, they only had 44 yards to work with. He threw that ball 48 yards. One setback. That's Graham on second and 10. Tennessee trying to answer Kentucky's score. And Graham fights his way down to the 26-yard line. David Snardin, 48. Senior out of Louisville's Mail High School, makes the tackle. Aided by Reggie Rusk. Once again, they're doing just good enough of a job up front to slow him down and not let him get a full head of steam up while he's headed into that secondary. And that allows the secondary enough time to come up and make the tackle. Jay Graham already 59 yards. He's having an outstanding day so far. Late changes defensively by Kentucky. A three tight end look from Tennessee. Bobbling it behind the line of scrimmage. Graham is dropped. Winchester does have a game winner this year against Georgia. From this distance, he has not been that strong, but he does have a lot of wind behind him, and he gets it with ease. 46 yards for Jeff Hall. His winning field goal against Georgia earlier this year on the game's final play was the first for a Tennessee team since the Iowa game in the kickoff classic in 87. That's one for Philip Fulmer's hometown. 10-6, Kentucky with the lead. 9.50 remaining here in the second quarter as the Wildcats have held Tennessee out of the end zone. They've been held to three each time. Mike Archer, who's done a remarkable job, former head coach at LSU, respected by many, included by that man, Philip Fulmer, and Archer has done it by using linebackers that know how to cover their area. And it's the bend-don't-break philosophy, wider than the widest and deeper than the deepest. Tutored under Bill Arnsparker at LSU, and of course comes from Miami as well, played collegiately there, and that's been his style for some time. Not a bad uh, man to copy or emulate. Florida with a 7-0 lead on Vanderbilt. That's in the second quarter. That's the other game being televised over many of these Jefferson Pilot Sports stations in the Palmetto State, South Carolina, with the early edge over Clemson in that rivalry. Penn State leading Michigan early. Well, we could have some surprises. 
Everyone trying to pencil in certain teams Everyone for certain bowl games. For that Notre Dame Air Force for them. <laughs> Indeed. Particularly in Tennessee. <laughs> On first down, Williams. Who has one eight-yard touchdown run today. Stopped by Ron Green. Uh, Gallion plays very well along that line and at linebacker. The critical thing in this ball game is field position. And for Kentucky right now, on their own 20-yard line, going into the wind, they really do need to get some first down. They cannot afford to have a three-and-out series where they're punting the ball and then the Volunteers taking over close to midfield. You're right. Uh, Tennessee, even when they're struggling offensively, forces you to move the football. They force you to score each time you touch it. On second and ten, Haskins. A mix-up it appeared between he and Yeast on that route, and then he felt Steve White coming from that defensive end spot, and he decided to get rid of it. Well, it was just a two-wide receiver pattern, and sending two guys out, they're either going to be open because you fooled them with the play take, but that time, Tennessee secondary was not fooled at all. They're going against one of the top guys over there. Just played the coverage, stayed with his man. I really believe that Haskins threw that ball away more than there might have been a mistake on the receivers. Three wide receivers now. Haskins is five of nine for 93 yards through the air. Quick drop. Gets rid of it, and Mo Williams has got it. Look out. First down, Kentucky. Haskins now six of ten. Williams. Watch the speed to the corner from Tennessee. See, it's so good. Against so many teams, Mo Williams can afford to get to that corner, but the Volunteers will close anytime you begin moving east to west. Deron Jenkins makes the tackle. You know, there are, there are two schools of thought when you're talking to wide receivers. Do you try and cut people and get them on the ground, or do you stay up and stay in their face? I really believe that a wide receiver should stay up. Number one, you don't want to get your uniform dirty, but it also allows the running back to decide which way he wants to go. And the defensive secondary for Tennessee is good enough where if you do cut them and knock them on the ground, they're going to bounce right back up. Pick up of two, second and eight. James Tucker in motion. Watch the reverse to Yeast. Leonard Little did. And how? He snuffed that one out immediately. And the sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina, wrapped up Yeast without much of a problem. You need a very nice mess when you have a play action fake and almost tossing that ball out there. Let Leonard Little see that, hey, the quarterback still has it. Leonard Little's a, a tough guy to get around. Even if you do fake him a little bit, he has enough speed to get back and recover and get in the play. Darren Clark, the tight end, 88, hobbled off after that play. Third down and 20 now for Kentucky. Haskins. Steve White gets the sack. He and Little have combined a couple of times. He'll get credit for that one alone. Senior out of Memphis, Tennessee. 6'2", 246. Steve White just unloads on Haskins right there. See him lower his shoulder to get that momentum and to turn that corner. That's something that Bruce Smith for the Buffalo Bills is great at. And he turns the corner on Barry Jones right there. Just amazing to see someone that big accelerate into the quarterback. Scary. Most in the conference, and most of them off the Tennessee corner at defensive end. And that punt into that wind is just, I mean, they need the roll. They need all of this roll to get any distance whatsoever. As Jimmy Carter could do very little with that into that gusting wind. It's a 25-yard punt, and that's with a 10-yard roll, a very kind one for Kentucky. 6.05 remaining in the half. Look at that score. Kentucky by four. Kentucky has the lead. The difference with the Southeastern Conference teams usually is depth. That's Kurt Soupy, 54. He's been out since September 23rd. He was their best pass rusher. He broke an arm against South Carolina. This is Gray Teague has come in to replace Jarvis Rito at left tackle for the Volunteers. Mark Levine is in the game. The freshman tailback 19, and he gets it. Picks up a couple of yards. Marvin Major, among others. 
in on the stop. Mark Jacobs, I beg your pardon, making that stop. Number 99 in blue, the freshman out of Waynesboro, Georgia. You know, it's funny, a player like Sufi comes back into the ball game and he has four sacks in the first four games. He has that big cast on his right arm. And you know what? The offensive players are more worried about that cast. They don't want to get hit by that thing. Look at the rushing yards. 64 for Tennessee. Much more than you usually anticipate. Levine. Run out of bounds near the 33-yard line of Kentucky. Bob Kessling's got more on that offensive line, Bob. You know, as, as productive as Tennessee's offense has been this year, Philip Homer says the one thing he's really been disappointed in is that they haven't been able to run the ball consistently all season long, although Graham has had this big year. A moment ago, Philip Homer came over to the offensive line when they're on the bench, and he challenged them to take control of this game, dominate the line of scrimmage, and let's run the football. First and ten, there's the quick pitch to Levine. Off to the left side, he picks up five maybe six David Snarden the senior out of Louisville Kentucky in on the stop the announcers for today's game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports this broadcast is a copyright presentation any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited second down and four <laughs> of Nash. Well, he's had some drops today. Nash a couple of times. Confident young man and was looking forward to, to going deep against one of the defensive backs. And I asked him, I said, well, which one would you like to go deep against? He said, anybody. <laughs> this is a controlled passing game. Generally, it's the volunteers receivers that will break tackles to make big plays for Manning. Four wide outs this time. Five. It'll be ruled a trap at the 15-yard line. Peerless Price, number 37 in white. Very well that time. Well, did you see Philip Fulmer over there, James? He is upset. It's that, that, is, it's that orange. Yep. 44-yard <laughs> field goal try for Hall. This time he hooks it. Nine through 71, giving his offensive line and receiver core a piece of his mind during that timeout. Well, I think the offensive linemen are, are certainly listening to him because they know that he is someone who has played their position. And, and really, that is really the strong point of this ball club. Granted, they have all the great window dressing, but when your offensive line plays well, that opens up everything else. Well, the loss of Bubba Miller may be a major factor in today's game. Now, here's Haskins with that option. And generally, that's a quarterback sweep. He very rarely will pitch off that option. Defensive quarterback. Oh, Bill Curry there, and this performance, at least up until now, could do a great deal to serve him well in the offseason. Haskins, as he's going down, passes it incomplete. Both Marcus Cross. My first and second year, and uh, you know, when he moved on to take a head coaching job, I was surprised. I thought he liked it. Yeast has it for a first down. Four minutes remaining in the game. First down and ten. Williams stopped by Little. Two, maybe three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Four you know, minutes remaining in the half. And Bob Kessling coming up at halftime. It really seems like they've had a lot of success when they've been able to spread out the Tennessee defense with that three wide receiver set, one tight end. Right now, I've been looking down on the sideline, and Darren Clark, who is their normal starting tight end, along with Marcus Clark, has been out of the ball game for a little while so we're going to have to keep our eyes open to see if Darren Clark can come back in he's also the long snapper so you know you look at all these freshman receivers and uh the outstanding high school quarterback and Mo Williams could be back Askins sack that's a coverage sack Leonard Little comes through to make that stop you know he really does a good job in trying to let the routes develop down the field because there are a lot of quarterbacks 
when they realized the athletes that Tennessee has rushing them would have gotten happy feet a lot earlier. So Billy Jack Haskins is trying to let the play come to fruition and let everything happen in front of him before throwing the ball out there and putting it up to grab. Yasuma Sims is coming to the game, number nine for Kentucky. Got a wide up. The screen up to Williams. Got a couple of great blocks. He's got a lot of room to run in front of him. Noel is the only one that can get him. At the two-yard line. What a run. May not be a bad penalty if they can keep him out of the end zone. First and goal. McLaurin is coming to the game for Williams, 21. Ray McLaurin with a marker down. Jonathan Brown. These are the kinds of mistakes the teams with losing records tend to make. Well, and it, it's really not what is characteristic of the Kentucky Wildcats. They are the lead. 215 remaining. Kentucky with a first down at the Tennessee six-yard line. Schellenberger is in the game as Williams dots the eye. Play thing. Haskins trying to do it on his own. Nothing doing. Again, the speed, just too big a factor for Tennessee defensively. Deron Jenkins makes the tackle. And uh, from the looks of Billy Jack, that may have been a bust of blood. Yeah, because I didn't see anyone out in the pattern who, who would have been the beneficiary of a play fake. So maybe there was just a mistake in the backfield, but they, they didn't lose anything drastically on that play. They lost it down, and that's it. Now they need to go and get it right. You see the Cats offense today inside that red zone. They would like to get a touchdown rather than a field goal here. And they've chosen to spread the formation out again. They have the three wide receivers in the ballgame. And another timeout call. They were right up against the 25-second clock right there. The clock has already started. Half the players want to huddle. Half want to go straight to the line of scrimmage. So they have 10 seconds once he gets under the center. So the play clock. It's already down to five. Haskins gives it up to Williams. Not much. About the only thing they get out of that is a better angle, provided uh, the next play goes nowhere for their field goal try. There's a little bit of confusion going on here. They had a great look on the play where they ran out of time and had to call the timeout. There was no one covering the tight end in the previous play. Now Tennessee wants to talk it over and figure out exactly what they want to do defensively. And you see Kevin Ramsey, the defensive back coach there, the tackle by Noel is to bring down Mo Williams. And I mentioned the face mask, that may not have been a waste of penalty. Third and six from the six. Haskins runs the option to Williams. Touchdown, Kentucky! further than you anticipate. Lehman Boyd. Downwind, and he's had some drops in the first quarter to deal with. Quick out to Pillow. He's ushered out of bounds. Two, maybe three yards shy of the first down at the 43-yard line. That's exactly what Kentucky wants in this situation. They want to keep Soupy's back in, Dante Key is in, and Mike Slagle's in. What they have to do, they have to keep constant pressure on Manny, even though there are only three guys rushing. Third and three for Peyton. Over the middle to Jay Gray. First down for the 49. Lock and stops on the first down with 49 seconds remaining. Tennessee hustles back up to the line. They do have two timeouts remaining. That pass is overthrown. Peyton was forced to unload that one a little more quickly than he would have liked. Dante, second down and 10. Incomplete, another drop. Joey Clark, I really have to.
to credit Kentucky on defense. Third and ten. Manning steps up, drills it for a first down. At the 33-yard line, Joey Kent reels that one in. Rush was there. 32 seconds left and the timeout called by the Volunteers. They have one remaining. Competitive. Now you have to be concerned about possibly dropping in the polls because the Northwestern continues to impress with each passing game. And I also think that Tennessee is the type of team who they understand what their position is and they also look at the teams that they're playing and realize that they've handled them pretty well in the past. I think they may be overlooking how good Kentucky is playing today. Let's go down to Bob Kessling. Bob? Tim, you remember when we had Kentucky against South Carolina, Mike Archer was talking about how he was trying to confuse Steve Tannehill and he had a... No, I think there's some rush there. I really do. From the 33... Going to the corner, incomplete. Working on Jay Graham. Very good of a call. Second and ten. Blitz. Manning in trouble. Nearly picked off. Schellenberg. It's a judgment call. Third down, ten. Five wideouts again for Manning. Picked off by Russ. And incomplete. Has connected a couple of times today from 20 and 46. And missed a 44 yard. This you know, when Hall was in high school, he hit a 62 yarder in both his sophomore and junior year. Yes. This will be. So this is a chip shot for him. This will be a 50 yard try. Jason Price will hold. Now remember, Jason Price. Ran a fake against South Carolina to close the half. For a touchdown. It's good. He puts it through this time. 50 yards, his longest. And very meaningful for the Volunteers as they close the gap to 17-9 with seven ticks remaining in the half. Paul didn't hit that one as well as what he hit the 47-yarder, but it, it's straight enough, and there's enough wind in this stadium to just barely ease it over the upright. He had been having some problems with blocks earlier, and he realized that it was his uh, plant foot that he had a little too close to the ball. Worked on it a great deal in practice, and he's now connected on three of four tries today. He had a block in that game with South Carolina. 17 to 9 with seven seconds left. But the Wildcats have really done a job against this Tennessee offense. Highly prepared, as prepared for a matchup against an offense like Tennessee's as I've seen this season. They, they really have. They've come into the ball game with a plan and they've executed it very well so far. It'll be interesting to see the adjustments that Tennessee makes at halftime to try and counter. Keep the ball away from Bob Holberg. <laughs> <laughs> this will be Sanford with the return. One second left, so there will be time for one play. For the postseason, as we touched on at the top, they do need help in many respects nationally. But with respect to the uh, the bowl circumstances, they, they really need the help from Air Force tonight against Notre Dame. An option team. Those people in Knoxville believes could give the Irish some trouble and get them into the alliance. But through one half, the big blue is turning Tennessee orange awfully blue with a 17-9 lead in the first half. Bob Kessling has our halftime coming up. And prior to that halftime, he'll have a conversation with, I'm sure, a very pleased head coach from Kentucky, Bill Curry. Bob? Bill, you got to be proud of your team in the first half. Been proud of them all year, Bob. Uh, they fought hard, and we got some youngsters that have made some mistakes, but some youngsters that have made big plays, too, along with some of the old guys. Your defense kept Tennessee out of the end zone in the first half. 
Yeah, and we're going to have to keep playing and a little better defensively, and we've got to we've got to run the ball better offensively. But we'll be working on that at the half. Well, thank you, Bill Curry. His Wildcats go to the locker room, leading Tennessee 17 to nine. Back with halftime activities from Commonwealth in just a moment. The Kentucky Wildcats trying to knock off the fourth-ranked Tennessee Volunteers. Peyton Manning and company held out of the end zone. Their only scores three Jeff Hall field goals. Welcome back to Lexington. Bob Kessling with you here at halftime with Kentucky trying to end its season on a good note. Our play from the first half, Mo Williams, Kentucky's all-star candidate, gives the Wildcats the lead as Mo Williams takes the option, gets it into the end zone. Only 37 yards in the first half for Mo Williams, but he got a couple of touchdowns helping Kentucky to the lead. The stat, look at the Tennessee wide receivers. Only Joey Kent has gotten the yards so far in this game as Kentucky's defense, with the help of some drops by the Volunteers, has been able to go ahead and get the lead in this contest. Kentucky leads it 17-9. That's what's going on in Lexington. Let's go around the league and look at some of the leaders in the Southeastern Conference. The best of the SEC is brought to you by Dr. Pepper, just what the doctor ordered, and Sonic, who invites you to drive in for a change. Mo Williams of the Kentucky Wildcats had another huge game last week. His third Cincinnati, he now leads the SEC in rushing. Danny Werfel of the Florida Gators had a big first half. Denying our score, we are at halftime here at Commonwealth Stadium, and a combined 100 to nothing, the score for Tennessee <laughs> the last two years in this series. So easily, this has been an impressive first half performance for the Wildcats. I would have to say it's been very impressive, and from an emotional standpoint, it is exactly what they needed to get off on the right foot in this ball game. They were able to shut them down early and do some things correct. Let's take a look at the scoring in this half. Much of it has been done with field goals, but also Mo Williams. We heard from Mom and Sis. This is why they're so happy. And then the field goal try that was good against the win by Brian Johnson, his first of the season. Stephen Hall has been successful on three of four tries for Tennessee. And I really believe that Stephen Hall will play a big part in this game as the game goes along. That was the option pitch into the boundary for the touchdown, and then the 50-yarder to close out the half for the Volunteers to make it a 17-9 game. As you look at the numbers, now understand that the ground yardage for Kentucky, much of it now is based on the play that looked to be a pass but is now being measured as a run for Mo Williams that got them down to the one-yard line when Noel made the stop. But let's talk about what Kentucky's defense, Mike Archer's defense, has done to confuse Peyton Manning and this Tennessee offense. Well, I don't know if Peyton is confused, but it has been a change. If there are two things that you can do to a great passer, you can blitz them and try and throw them off. That doesn't work because their receivers run so well after the catch. But the one thing that they have done is they forced him to throw underneath, and they've tackled well once the player has caught the ball. Tennessee hoping to move into the postseason on a high. Bill Curry just wants another season. And if his team responds, he'll get that and more. The new Mazda sport truck, B2300. Lee Apparel, with new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By Miller Lite. When you've got the great taste of an ice-cold Miller Lite, life is good. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By your local Mazda dealers. And by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. It is a shocker at halftime. Kentucky 17, Tennessee 9 as we prepare for the third quarter. We saw a very animated Philip Fulmer during the first half. Moments ago, he chatted with our Bob Kessler. Coach, what did you talk to your team about at halftime? About executing. We basically got one guy or two guys. We're just not playing as well as we're capable of playing. Give credit to Kentucky, but we've got to have a lot better second half. Peyton Manning not having at all the kind of numbers that he would like. He has had a few drops, though, today. And I think this young man has played with enormous courage. He uh, really has coming into the ball game with that shoulder injury. You can see him trying to loosen it up right there. So he has something to overcome the second half, trying to keep that thing loose. Because normally at the beginning of the game where the adrenaline is very high, it's easy to get in the flow of the ball game. What he has to do now is come out and continue to take command of his offensive team, move the sticks, Maybe they don't have to score this first drive, but they need to get in position where if they punt the ball, make Tennessee go the long distance to score. That is what they've done to this point, as you see Keo Sanford 
back deep for the Wildcats. Remember, they won the toss and then deferred to open the game, so they do have possession as we get underway here in the second half. Paul's boot is short, taken by Sanford at the 10. Sanford gets away. One last block from Harris. Down at the 34. George Harris shielded his man and did not pick up the block in the back, which aided him, and then finally Hall hauled him down. That's the difference when you recruit kids who have high SAT scores. They don't make bad mental errors like that. But Sanford does a great job. They have him by one leg, and he runs right out of that, heads up the sideline, and gets more positive yardage. And there we see the shielding block once again. It would have been very easy to make the mistake that time and block in the back. And Sanford with a 56-yard kickoff return. Adding to his total numbers, it could uh, put him in the history books here at Kentucky. Wilson is being aided. But on most of his own power, it gets out. You see the possession story for Kentucky. They were able to move the ball on most of those early drives. in this half it could be abysmal for the orange terry fair holds him down once again kentucky lining up in a formation that is very familiar to what tennessee does offensively the three wide receivers really is spreading this team out it's not allowing kentucky no, rather not allowing tennessee to get the quick safety force that they're accustomed to james tucker 32 in blue set at the top of your screen o'farrell at the bottom but he doesn't crash hard enough. William, good enough speed to turn it up. I think Philip Fulmer hit on a very key point in that halftime conversation with Bob Kessler. That is a defense that normally would recover, and they didn't, and actually hung their heads on that play. Well, another thing that has happened, and I've mentioned it before, is that they have now spread that team out. They have taken the safeties out of the force, now the safeties are lined up over wide receivers, and their first thought is coverage. You see the clock uh, now showing 14:47, which uh, is not accurate either. So they're still working on it. They're still trying to, de to determine how much time was in fact coming off the clock. It didn't take long, that's for sure. 56-yard kickoff return from Sanford, and then a couple of plays, and Mo Williams is in the end zone again. His third touchdown of the day, his 17th rushing of the year. That's a happy camper. You know, little things become very critical now. What Kentucky has to do defensively is not become too cautious. They've had a nice change of pace in their defensive signal calling. They need to continue that to keep Tennessee off balance. The Wildcats haven't claimed a beer barrel in 10 years of the gates with a Keo Sanford kickoff return and then two plays later Mo Williams into the end zone for his third score of the day. Brian Savinsky will kick off. Fair is back deep. They've been pooching these kicks generally and they do it again. And a fair catch is called for at the 34 yard line. We talked about the defense hanging its head there and you notice number one for Tennessee. You know, I'm expecting, you know, we had talked about Leonard Little so much going into this ballgame. You see him right there appearing at the top of your screen. And I thought right there for an instant he might have been able to turn on the speed and make a play on Williams. 
but he doesn't. It, you know, that is a reflection of how they've played all day long. Just a little off, not as intense as what they need to be. Absolutely. Now, Manning, who generally throws underneath, gives it to Graham. Picks up a couple of yards. And we touched on it early today without Bubba Miller, suspended for at least one game, just a game, to make absolutely certain that the NCAA is taken care of. Dante Key and Supi and company have managed to get through and give Manning some pressure. Second and six. Kent right at the sideline for the first down. At the 45-yard line, George Harris there to polish up. You know, one of the things that, that Peyton Manning is looking at when he gets under the center, when they do go to a four-man front and they spread out with the three wide receivers, he's looking to see how many players there are in a box, which is around the tight end, the tackle area. And if he sees seven players in the box, he will normally try and pass the football. If he sees six, it's like a very official watch. <laughs> Six or seven yards. Now, there have got to be some gaps there in that coverage to throw underneath and, and take advantage. It, it's as if Tennessee's offense got a little impatient at a point in the first half. Well, you've mentioned two things. Number one, they had a couple of drops early in the ballgame. What a drop does to you as a receiver. It makes you hesitate when you catch it, and no longer are they getting the big runs after the catch. That's one of the things that they've been great at all season long is turning a short pass into a long game. Second down and three. Should have the first down inside the 45 near the 43 yard line of Kentucky. They have had to play more basic because of those losses. The veterans like Hiles and Stephen Hall. Talk Mike. about those injuries. They've only had three starters start all 10 ball games on defense. Graham. Oh, Jay Graham running right through a few tacklers there. Now near the 30-yard line, Littleton Ward drags him down. Pick up of 13 yards for Jay Graham. Watch the guard and the tackle both pull around, and there's a hold there that doesn't get called. Robert Poole grabs a hold of Mike Schellenberger and just pulls him down, and normally you'd see a yellow flag right there. You saw Lehman Boyd also try an arm tackle, which doesn't work against Graham. First and 10 at the Kentucky 30. Flips. It'll be interesting to see what they choose to do here on second and nine. They're, they're getting close to scoring territory. This is a critical down for Tennessee. Manning letting it fly for Price. Incomplete. Careless Price, the intended receiver. Plenty of heat from Reggie Rusk on the safety blitz. Rusk, the senior out of Texas City. Three-man pass rush again. Peyton Manning has had trouble with this look so far. Third and nine. The out pattern incomplete. Joey Kent was out of bounds. And see, that's a breakdown in concentration. I've got to see that one again because from my vantage point, I know I'm 200 yards away, but it looked like Joey Kent was clearly in bounds. The pass is a little late coming out from Manning. There he is right there on the sideline. That's awfully close. That's one of the reasons you wear black shoes so you get those calls. Those little tricks of the trade. <laughs> yeah, those little wide receiver tricks of the trade. Hall in for a field goal try at 46. He's three for four today. From the left half. Oh, that's just a beauty. Absolutely perfect. And his toe keeping Tennessee in it. Um, 24 to 12 score in the third. Official time being kept on the field. Back after this word from your local station. Tennessee being held to threes. Trail by 12, 24 12. Don't forget, 11 07, we're told, officially left on the clock, being kept on the field. It's being taken out. Well, after a 56-yarder to open the second half, you have a little confidence. Why not bring it out? Corey Gaines is down there to make the stop. 
after a 17-yard return down to Bob Kessler. And not only is the game clock not working, the play clock isn't working either, which is going to... There's Cleet with clock. <laughs> that, that's a tough assignment. And, you know, he wants that other glove on. He yeah. had his cold weather gloves on. He's not happy about that clock malfunctioning at all. Got to take a lick and keep on ticking. Here's Haskins, a straight drive. And down he goes. Leonard Little, Steve White, Billy Barron all in there. Billy Barron, the sophomore out of River Ridge, Louisiana. 6'3", 262-pounder was actually the first to get to him. And Haskins is coming off. He's that, that shoulder has gotten to him again. Well, you noticed how he went down. That uh, left shoulder bent. And Jeff, Jeff Speedy. Speedy's back in the ballgame. Yep, Jeff Speedy coming in. 6'2", junior out of Franklin, Tennessee. Brentwood Academy. A nominee for GTE All-American. 3.76 GPA. So he's intelligent. But he's not quick enough to get away from that pressure as Barron comes through again. We continue to work on Haskins. We've got a marker down. Holding against the Wildcats. So not a good job of holding them. <laughs> well, this is just the scenario you touched on earlier with that first drive. One thing that is so important on the We're three holding out. against the offense. That penalty is declined. Third down. Haskins coming back into the game and Speedy leaves. But this is just what Tennessee wanted in that opening drive to get some field position and move Kentucky backwards. Right now they have them backed up and this is a tough third down even if Jeff Haskins, Billy Jack Haskins is 100%. Into the end zone he goes. Rolling out. Throws it incomplete. Tucker, the intended receiver. And now Kentucky will be forced to punt and into a very stiff wind to give Tennessee the kind of field position it really wants to turn up the heat here in the third quarter. With all the athletes that Tennessee has on their ball club here, the best that Kentucky can hope for, hope for is just a fair catch. They don't want to give them room to return this ball. Jimmy Carter to punt it away. Freshman, redshirt freshman out of Dunwoody, Georgia. Summers is waiting at the 40. He may need to move up. He and Terry Fair back here. High into the air. Wind grabs it. Fair catch called for and nearly dropped by Summers. That was a tough one to bring in to the 27-yard line. Now a little lip between he and Mo Williams. Here's a look at this week's Burger King Top 10 Fan Poll, where you, the fan, votes for who for one. This week's number one team, Nebraska. And if you look at the numbers, the fans don't believe in Tennessee either. Well, the fans that go to Burger King don't. That's right. Stop by your local Burger King restaurants to find out how you can cast your vote for number one. This volunteers team hoping for things to fall their way the rest of this regular season. And we're told that uh, Peyton Manning is being for informed that the clock is indeed accurate now with 9.45 remaining in the third quarter. That's about the 60-40 that they're used to in Tennessee with play selection. That's Peterson. Now the old guard doesn't like watching that. First and 15, play fake. Out pattern complete. Benji Schuler gets his first reception of the game. If the name sounds familiar, it should. Out of Bryson City, North Carolina. Now that's okay by Tennessee standards. You force them into a second and eight situation where they still have to make two good plays to get a first down. And that's what the Wildcats defensive scheme has been all about today. Now there are four down linemen here. doesn't get past that first tackle as Lehman Boyd drags him down by the shoelaces. The Jefferson Pilot Sports score line. Florida a 41 point favorite in that game. Crowd 
rises to attention on third and three for Tennessee. Five wide receivers. Don't be surprised by a quarterback draw right here. Looking for Kent. He's got it this time. No stepping out of bounds or dropping it. This time for number 11 in white. The junior out of Huntsville, Alabama brings it in. This is called Tennessee's zero formation. There are no running backs in the backfield. Five wide receivers. Puts all the pressure on the secondary. And you see right there, the coverage is almost there. Number eight, George Harris slapping his hands, knowing that it was his responsibility to stay in that outside zone. Graham wrapped up by Schellenberg. Well, he's been everywhere today. Very active. You know, a lot has to be said, and I'm sure you remember this well from your playing days at Stanford. Has one more season to go. Yeah, he's a junior. So many of these defensive players are seniors, and they're playing with a lot of heart today. Over the middle to Nash. Nash! Not quite there. Just short of the end zone. But Kentucky inside a yard away from the touchdown. And that's one of the things that Kentucky has wanted to concentrate on is the run after the catch. And he does get away from the first tacklers, but it's a well-thrown ball by man. He gets there, and you see two guys kind of just overrun it. And then still enough pursuit to get there and get him right before he gets into the end zone. Power eye set here. Manning on the quarterback sneak. No signal as yet. <laughs> Watching him during warm-ups, it reminds me a little bit of Johnny United yeah. with those black eye tops. Yeah, I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago. Reminds you more of Unitas than his dad. Manning again. Touchdown, Tennessee. That touchdown was more a result of Kentucky not being able to move the ball on offense than anything that Tennessee really did offensively. Schellenberger coming up to meet him, but it was a bit too late. I think that time he turned to the side and figured there'd be less to hit. Now the extra point for Jeff Ball. And the Volunteers are down only five, 24-19. They're trying to move to nine and one and six and one in the Southeastern Conference and behind a Heisman candidate, they could get there. Is smoking Tennessee back into it. It's 24 to 19. Down by five, but they are trailing a Kentucky team that is playing inspired football today for Bill Curry. A coach that many had speculated could be coaching his last game today. High into the air, the kick to Keo Sanford. Again, a yard deep, he brings it up. And again, he's hammered short of the 15. So after a 56-yard kickoff return to open this half, he's been stopped shy of the 20 both times. This time he is hammered. And you saw him take a quick look down to see where he was, and that hesitation cost him the running room getting up behind his blockers. They cannot afford another three-and-out series right here. They've only had one, and we saw what the result of it was. They gave Tennessee the ball inside the 30-yard line they score. You bet. And a Manning one-yard run. Corey Gaines made that stop for the volunteer special teams. They run the option into the boundary. Haskins again, and there is a price to be paid for that play. We've already seen him leave this game in this quarter in the last series. Ron Green. I've seen all day long. East. down two catches for 22 yards for yeast today and he does have a drop and i mean a drop that was for a touchdown can you lay off receiver dropping ball <laughs> <laughs> williams the lone setback gets it and he is hauled down by bill duff sophomore from delran new jersey and might be the most improved player on this defensive team duff among others second string 
defensive linemen have really aided Philip Fulmer's team. And what they've done is they have a fresh set of legs coming in after this Kentucky front. And Kentucky's played well to this point, but it's really hard when guys are coming in fresh and with clean uniforms. Yeah, that's right. And clean uniforms really <laughs> throw you off. They, and that's why you see more quickness from that down line. They are fresh. Paul Williams makes it out beyond the 35 to the 36 yard line. Billy Barron makes the tackle. Tyrone. Uzalak next to Mike Archer on the left. Uzalak was a head coach most recently at Navy prior to going to Colorado before coming over to Kentucky. Haskins inside the Tucker who hits his knees at the 40 yard line. PE, they're all over something really wild. <laughs> Second and six. Williams is stopped by Gallion this time. Gallion and Barron both coming through there. Scott Gallion is a young man whom we had a chance to chat with uh, last night. We talked a little bit about the, the rivalry and the fact that when you've dominated a series as, as Tennessee has, this becomes just any other game to the players. And that may have been the problem with Tennessee in the first half of today's game. They've been playing it like any other game rather than a rivalry game. They have stepped up their level of play, but so has Kentucky. And here we are with another critical third down situation. Third and seven, three wide receiver set. Maybe he'll go to Mo Williams out the backfield again. They're showing blitz. Haskins in trouble. Let's it fly incomplete. They were showing blitz, then backed off, and then Steve White came crushing through to get a piece of it. Marcus Cross, the tight end, was the intended receiver. But Kentucky did manage some field position out of this drive after the poor return from Sanford. Jimmy Carter will punt it away. What you would like to do right now, you'd like to limit that return. They're in a tight punt formation, which surprises me a little bit, because what that can allow Tennessee to do is to pin those outside cover men in. High into the air. Summers with a fair catch. And they'll have the ball at the 12-yard line with the Volunteers, and we've got a late marker. Well, you have to give him some room, and that apparently is going to be the call. I'd be totally flabbergasted if that were the call because I'd never see that call. It was interference with the opportunity to catch the kick against the kicking team. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Uh, questionable at best. I'm having a hard time with that, especially when he's making an effort to get yeah. away from that guy. Yeah. We want to thank Duncan Machinery Movers here in <laughs> Manning. Quick out pattern to Kyler. Effective for a first down. Lehman Boyd makes the stop. Kyler does a good job there. There are two guys right there. You can dodge one guy. Two guys coming up to attack for you. You just try and split them. And that's exactly what he did. Ran right in between them because they're indecisive as to who's going to make the first hit on the ball carry. First and ten, Tennessee. Play fake. Now it's Joey Kent deep. Joey Kent deep. Joey Kent touchdown. earlier this time they make absolutely certain to make it work it's the ninth touchdown of the season for Kent and there you see coach Sanders who signals in those plays 
very pleased at the outcome. The Volunteers are going to go for two. Try to make it a 28, 27, 24 game. Caught for two. Dustin Moore, the tight end. So the Volunteers now lead it by three. 27 to 24. There's Dustin Moore, a guy who started the year as a defensive end, and he has so many credentials. They've been trying to find a way to get him involved in the offense. He's rushed for over 2,100 yards while he was a senior in high school. Here's a replay. Watch him bury the ball into the stomach of Graham, then it comes right up throwing, and you can see the distance that Kent has already established over Harris, and there's no catching Kent from behind. Yeah, Graham really played this fake well, didn't he? A bite. A big bite. Yeah, and it's over. Joey Kent, the junior out of Huntsville, Alabama, is coming in today only needing a few catches to break the single-season record of 58 set by Thomas Woods back in 1988. Busy quarter so far, 25 points on the board. For the Kentucky fans, they're a little disappointed, but they're looking for their ball to climb back in it. That touchdown catch did eclipse the Thomas Woods record of 88 with the single season record of total catches for a receiver at Tennessee. Sanford again. They have played so well today, yet another challenge in front of them after this. I think two things are in their favor. If they can get a decent drive going here, you have to look at what Tennessee has done. They play well with the wind at their back, and it's a factor today. And if Kentucky can play well to keep this game even, maybe a kicking uh, game will be the difference in this ball game. Oh, Williams on the ground. Five, maybe six. And anytime you've got a back as durable as a Mo Williams, somebody that can carry it 40 times if need be, Kentucky has also gone back to their two tight end set here, so maybe they are just going to try and grind it out with Moe Williams. Second and four. Williams off the left side. That's near a first down. Very close. What Tennessee needs to be careful of right now, because they're looking at that two tight end set, they're thinking run, and I watched how quickly the safeties filled that time. Last now you see the scoring in the third. Tennessee's had very big third quarters this year. This is should come as no surprise to the fans that the Volunteers are having a, a big third quarter. First and ten after the measure. Williams wrapped up by Gallion. Just nothing doing right there at the point of attack. If, if I'm Haskins and I'm under the center, have that play called I have to look over there and realize that I'm outnumbered on that side before the play is started you can see the safety with the quick fill right there and then there's nothing happening because he takes up a block that the lineman was supposed to get on the linebacker one of the things that's helped Tennessee defensively in this half has been the changing rotation of linemen we've seen uh, the Duffs and the Coleman's and the Billy Barons come in in a series and play well only to allow the Front line, there's a chance to get some rest and come in with fresh legs. Haskins on the curl finds Yee. Pick up of five, maybe six yards on the play. A ride with the wind in the fourth quarter. That they will, trailing by three, as the Volunteers rank fourth in the country, try to stave off Kentucky. And hold 7-24 here in the bluegrass. The Wildcats trailing by three to Tennessee. And the beer barrel lies in the balance. There at the Tennessee bench. All of the scores of all of the games imprinted on the barrel. And I'm sure Bill Curry is thinking about a lot more than just the barrel. Mo Williams, by the way, 25 carries so far. 36 yards, three touchdowns. I think we both agreed he needed about 35 carries, maybe 170 yards for Kentucky to have a chance. Third and three to open the quarter. Haskins on the option. Look at that courage and strength and stick to itiveness. Unbelievable oh, to Billy Jack. Oh, wow. You see him 
that left shoulder again. We're talking about a kid who Bill Curry described as gritty, a player with NFL toughness, and he showed it all right there. Three missed tackles by Tennessee. You know, you watch the college game long enough, and you say, James, what separates the college game from the professional level? And it's stories like this. Situations where a team is given no chance. Outmanned at every position. Your quarterback hasn't practiced all week. And then he takes an option play and runs it 47 yards through three tacklers that may have more speed than he has. And I was in the locker room before the game, saw him standing there in front of his locker, and I could see the hump in his left shoulder where you could tell that it had been separated. And here he is, and there's Mo Williams just providing a little shield block for him right there. But Billy Jack Haskins deserves the Medal of Honor. You know, it's a run that he did all on his own, but with a heck of a lot of help. Zavinsky mm -hmm. kicks off. Comes down to Summers. John Summers tripped up at the 30-yard line. So a little take that from Kentucky as they get back into the lead after Tennessee had reclaimed some momentum in this game in the third quarter which should have been expected to some extent. We take a look at our Lee Apparel through three-quarter stats. A little of that has changed here early in the fourth, but the rushing yards with Kentucky, that was a must coming in. But I think the numbers in the air for Haskins, uh, a lot of gravy for this team. Now they set up the quick out to Matt. Sacks by Littleton Ward. Again, one of those cornerbacks pressed into duty to replace the likes of Hall and Van Hiles, and he has nine tackles today. And they're doing exactly what we talked about they needed to do because watching this Tennessee team on film, all we saw was short, fast, long run. They've been able to make tackles after the catch here. Second and seven for Peyton Manning. Goes to Graham. Quick burst from Jay Graham. You know, it might sound crazy to say that somebody makes a great play on a 10-yard gain, but Schellenberger here is falling down, reaches out, and just gets a hand on him and slows him down just enough so someone else can make come and clean up the play. First and 10 Tennessee. Softly to Graham. That's a, one of his real specialties. And Graham near first down. But once again, the Kentucky defense reacting in enough time to come in and make the play because we've seen Graham take that and go the distance with it. Lamont Smith making the tackle. Schellenberger dropping in coverage, trying to locate a man in his area, shields off, Nash behind him, and then he comes up and he in position to make the play on Graham. Second and a yard. Up the middle, first back through, Chester Ford. A junior playing in his home state today, Danville, Kentucky. He was a all-state defensive lineman in high school you know, in Danville. When they watch Chester Ford, Pretty good hole there, James. Very good hole right there. Chester Ford must really grade him. He was the player of the year here in Kentucky. And to let him cross over the border, we don't like to see that happen. First and 10 from the 34 of the Wildcats. Graham again, guarding his way to the Kentucky 25, a yard shy of the first down. And now, the yards on the ground for Graham and Ford, seven, eight, nine at a chunk against this Kentucky defensive front. And what's happening is Kentucky has tried to alternate some of their defensive linemen, and they may need to get their starters back in, even if they're a little tired. Second and one. Manning will check off. Looking for the fade. Tipped into the air by Ward with his foot as he was trying to check Maurice Staley, 21. 
Some of the Tennessee faithful believe there had been some contact there, but no flag. You know, on the field. I, I really enjoy it when I see a non-call because they're both trying to go for the ball. Their feet get tangled up more so than their upper bodies. I know the receiver wants the call, but that ball has to be more on the money than that. Third and two. And the conversion ratio may move to above 50% off that run from Chester Ford. Looks to be very close. So Fulmer down there very quickly to check on that mark to make sure it's a right foot mark, and it is. Clock continues to move. We're under 12 minutes. Bill Curry's Wildcats trying to pull off what would be for Kentucky, clearly the upset of the year, and one of the conferences and the nation's upsets of the season. Should the score hold up? Manning out to Kyler. Tony Woods, 29, makes the stop. He's a true freshman out of Jefferson, Indiana, St. Xavier High School. And a young guy that's uh, highly touted. Many believe that should he remain healthy, he might be able to play at the next level. He's got has great quickness over there. One of the things that Bill Curry was concerned about was his ball club being fresh enough to stay with Tennessee because Tennessee coming off of a bye week and they haven't played last week. Second and one. Manning. Kyler. Touchdown, Tennessee. That's his seventh reception of the day. His first for a touchdown. Kyler and Nash almost ran into each other on that pass pattern and they kind of rubbed the defensive backs off of each other. The Volunteers offense continues to put pressure on Kentucky now to make plays when they get the ball back as they have solved Kentucky's defensive presence in the first half. The former's team read, react, adjust. Peyton did. And there's the result. Kyler with his first touchdown reception of the year. Greg Kyler just adding to that group of tremendous wide receivers. They'll use seven of them, will the volunteers. Bill Curry's team has, uh, has answered the challenge on many an occasion. They'll have to do it again. You see the scoring drive, 69 yards, just nine plays, notably 3-10 off the clock. Hall will kick it off. Sanford, back deep with George Harris. Harris at the six. Harris, beyond the 20 to the 23-yard line, and a flag down. And uh, that's very important. Uh, the Wildcats have had problems when backed up in the return area. We have an illegal block in the back against the receiving team on the return. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down and 10. And again, it points up the special teams problems, and you see more penalties even late in a season of, in college football where special teams are concerned. And uh, very noteworthy here. You see Bill Curry getting a, a hand on perhaps the guilty party. David Ginn, reserve linebacker, as he chats with him. Chats with him? Yeah, I, I'll call it that. First and 10 from the 13-yard line. Haskins rolling right, but right in the middle. Gets away from him, though. Let's it go for Coleman. Wow! That had touchdown possibilities written all over it. And now Haskins has to come off. His shoulder really dragging. Noel was back covering. And now, after making that throw and rolling right into Leonard Little, he was going to be tagged and was. Spun away from the initial pressure. And they may have to go the rest of the way with speed. He's in more pain now than ever. Does a great job in just avoiding Little the first time, but... You see the guys coming back on him, and this ball comes down in good enough position for the receiver to make a play on it, but he just can't get his hands on the football. Speedy is run down. 
And you know that initial hit from Little, which he spun away from, might have been the one. That might have been the well, hit. It may have been enough just to tweak it out of position a little bit. You know, it's probably still stable, but every time he gets hit on it, he needs some recovery time for the pain. The last game of the year for Kentucky, and uh, you want to play until the bitter end. Billy Jack asking, what a performance today. Sophomore out of Tillman High School in Paducah, Kentucky, giving way to Jeff Speedy, ironically, out of the state of Tennessee, Brentwood Academy in Franklin. Third and 11. Here comes the pressure. Little got all of it. It's his sixth tackle of the day, his second for a sack. Just no one open downfield. He had enough time to throw the football. Watch him drop back in the pocket. He's looking left and listening. Then he comes back to his right. He'd like to throw the football, but there's no one away from the defenders downfield where he can even throw the football. He probably makes a smart decision just taking the sack. Carter does have a win, gusting it better than 20 miles per hour behind him, but he punts from his end zone. Fair and Summers are at the 45. And we'll have room to work with the fumble. Kentucky's got it. Lehman Boyd. As they come together on just who was going to feel that play. Williams. Mo to midfield. Tyrone Hines trips him up. And you know, he's giving the indication, James, with every carry that he might break it. He's a type of runner. When you watch him run, he just makes you hold your breath. You gasp when you watch him. The word on Billy Jack has what happened. So he's not playing, but he's still very much in the game. Second and two, and Mo Williams ran into some other momentum from Jonathan Brown, big number 91, sophomore out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, for a loss. He's lucky he didn't lose the football right there because he gets hit right after he takes the handoff from Speedy. And with, you want a back to be prepared for that initial hit, and he was that time. Timeout called by Speedy. 48 remaining, Billy Jack Haskins. With a clinched fist, urging on Jeff Speedy, his replacement. Boy, what a remarkable performance he's given. And this is as big a play as Jeff Speedy will have, third and five. O'Farrell in motion. Speedy with time. Mo Williams is there. Did not get it. Was forced out of bounds, short of the first down. Boy, it appeared as just thrown just a little late. He's looking in the middle, waiting for O'Farrell to uncover, and just throws it right to, and you see him out of bounds in front of the marker right there. This is a critical play right here. That has been the book on Speedy. One of the reasons Haskins took the job was his, a little hesitation, a, a half second slower than Billy Jack. Fourth and less than a yard. He has the first down. Important for two reasons. First, you need a score. Second, Florida now. Out with a flurry against Vanderbilt. Clemson and South Carolina remains tight. And that's another one that's very important. Penn State and Michigan. Wolverines get the Buckeyes next week. First and 10, Kentucky. Play back to Williams. He's got him. He's got him. Looking for Coleman. Incomplete. Boy, there was plenty of help. Some of it illegal. He used his right arm. Even though Jenkins knocked the ball away, he used his right arm to get himself up and to keep Coleman on the ground. Going to get him with a face mask with that arm when he reached in. We have a face mask foul against the defense. Foul. A first down. Tennessee has only been penalized three times for 10 yards. Kentucky three for 20. Two of the least penalized teams in the Southeastern Conference. Williams, oh, that sprint draw gets it down to the 36-yard line. And he almost missed Williams with the handoff right there. 
tended to go to the right side behind Brandon Jackson and Jonas Leaner. Second and six. Williams stopped at the point of attack by Leonard Little and company. And we saw that 90 yards of offense on the right side, and a lot of that is that screen pass that was actually a lateral mm -hmm. later credited to him because he has been balanced about everywhere he's gone today. Philip Fulmer has built a solid program during his stay, taking over for Johnny Majors in the interim and then later becoming head coach. This is a trying time for him today. Third down and seven. Getting a lot more claw out of these cats than anticipated. Quick pass to East. CD running out of time, just letting it fly incomplete. Well, that was dangerous. That was very dangerous. Steve White had him wrapped up. Dangerous, but the ball was not far from Mo Williams. He must have a magnet in his body. Look at this. He's on the ground. The officials missed that call right there. And on fourth and seven, with 6.52 to play, Bill Curry, in effect, is making a decision that says the ball game. You know, O'Farrell just came into the ball game. He was a former quarterback, and it might not have been a bad time to let him run the option. Fourth down and seven. Kentucky. How did they have that? 50 left, and Curry goes for it. Now, there's a lot on the line for the future of his program. And that's a decision that tells you that the audible they have nothing to lose in this game. Into the option to the short side of the field, and Gallion was there. There's a flag down, down late, too. Maybe holding against Kentucky. All of that speed that Tennessee has makes it awfully difficult for a lineman not to get caught a few times holding. Barry Jones is a senior out of Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. He knows the difference between a good hold and a bad hold if you're trying to protect your last line at quarterback. <laughs> a bad one is one that gets called. That's the only definition. We have holding against the offense. They have been able to close the gap. At the top of the show, we pointed out three or four close losses, and they would love to be sitting here looking at the possibility of playing the ball game. Paul Williams makes it down to about the 30-yard line. Raymond Austin in on the tackle. Well, there was a time after Kentucky beat LSU that they really did have the schedule in their favor. And then when they long drilled this program, and Bill Curry in particular, with a heavy blow that they're trying to recover from even now. Second and 16. confusion in the route. Tuck, Tucker ran and out, and Tucker was really defined at how he was running his route. He was trying to get away, yeast rather, he was trying to get away from Jenkins on the out pattern, and the ball was just thrown deep. It may have been a good throw by Speedy, because Jenkins was in position where he would have, would have had a chance to break on the ball and possibly intercept it. Third down and 16, 515 remaining. And uh, considering the decisions already made in this drive, one would have to believe, if you, as you look at time of possession, and Kentucky's gotten the job done in this quarter, that they are in four-down territory I would yet think again. field goal would also be a big call right here. Yeah, it would be. In trouble, could not take a sack. And now we've got a marker down. Barron and White combine on the stop. And now we'll have to wait for the flag. Now, Speedy came up pointing to Mo Williams. We have no foul. There was a receiver in the area. No foul. A receiver in the area. So here comes the decision. There you see that pressure breaking down. Let's speed off the corners. And they will go for the field goal. Savinsky, who has struggled some this year. Now, this is a senior out of Henry Clay High School in Lexington. But he's struggled this year. Only 10 of 22 in field goals. This is a 48-yard try to tie the game. 
this season. Five of 12, speedy to hold. And it's blocked. Can be returned by Jenkins. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Blocked by Raymond Austin. And uh, Philip Fulmer has always been proud of uh, his special teams, both coverage and his field goal blocks have been dominant. Here's another example to turn the big blue away. Five minutes left. The loneliest man in a blue jersey, Brian Savinsky. It's been a very difficult season for him. And limited only to long field goal tries today. Brian Johnson has the only field goal for the Wildcats. 34-31, five minutes remaining, and Peyton Manning would just like to control the ball now. As Graham has his lone setback. He'll do it in the air with a short passing game. Tyler caught the touchdown pass earlier. Stopped by Tony Woods. And so much of their passing game, James is predicated on controlling the clock. Exactly right. And that time, Manning came up to the line of scrimmage. They had a run called out of the huddle. He looked at it. The configuration had seven men in the box there to stop the run. Quick flip to the outside. They pick up nine yards. Second down, a yard to go. Up the middle, that's a first down. Jay Graham with the carry to the 45-yard line. Stopped by Lamont Smith. Don't forget next week. Kentucky does have two timeouts left. Tennessee with a full complement. And the clock continues to run as we near the four-minute mark. So this series becomes almost a must for the Kentucky defense. Graham. That's five, maybe six yards right there. And the clock that wouldn't start at the beginning of the second half now becomes a big factor. That and Jay Graham continuing to rack up big yardage on first down, getting five, six, seven yards a pop. On the day, Jay Graham, 22 carries, 120 yards. That's that's a quiet 120 when you think about it. Puts him up to 1,200 yards on the season also. Second down, three. Chester Ford, the fullback, carrying some cats with him for a first down. Well, if the last series wasn't a must, this one certainly is for Kentucky. They have not used either of their two remaining timeouts as we approach the three-minute mark. You have to wait until you're able to make a play defensively before you commit to using one of those timeouts. You can't make, can't call timeout after they've gained seven yards on first down. Graham. That's another first down. Reggie Rusk made the stop. Officials timeout call as they and there were several opportunities for Kentucky. I look back at this game from an offensive standpoint. There was always pressure on them to respond to Tennessee's challenges. And they did respond very well. You know, they had a tough time once Billy Jack Haskins went out of the ball game. His great run for that touchdown, the possession before he gets hurt, was critical for them. 237 left in the game. And it is second down and less than a yard. It probably would have helped Kentucky more if that had been a first down. And Peyton is just going to let the uh, game clock wind down right here. Now this, they haven't burned the timeout earlier. They, they can't stop the clock right here. Well, there's your first down, which will stop the clock for the change to move at 216. He's a very bright young man with a tremendous future already if you were to talk to scouts they'd say that coll collegiate quarterback with the highest ceiling at the next level would be Peyton Manning. Second time out of the half. 
Kentucky takes that timeout. They do have one. I think a lot of people, like you said, were a little disappointed when they lost to Vanderbilt and their first year coach, Rod Dowhower. Because if someone can come in in their first year and beat you when you've been there for six, that raises a lot of eyebrows. Absolutely. The win over Cincinnati, not a bad team, did serve the confidence of this Kentucky team going into today's game. I think that was obvious. Graham, another carry, gets it inside the Kentucky 30-yard line. Rusk again making the tackle along with Schellenberger, and the clock stops for the final time with Kentucky's timeout. Let's go down to Bob Kessler. Bob? You know, you talked about Tim Couch. Uh, last night, Tim Couch quarterback Leslie County in the playoffs against Belfry. The big buildup, of course, all week has been about Couch and his assault on Josh Booty's record for most yards in a high school career. He hit it like game, Florida State. You know, it's interesting. You go into town that size and you see the Bobby Bowdens of the world walking around. That's big news. But they're just not there to pick up a local newspaper either. <laughs> You know, you look at this ball club and with Mo Williams returning, they've just been besieged by injuries. If they can field a healthy team next year, they'll have a chance to win some ball games and maybe get back in the bowl hunt. Graham, maybe a yard shy of the first down, which would all but end it. Reggie Rusk again coming up to help Snarden. Lehman Boyd. Also in there. Boyd had that uh, big fumble recovery on the punt. That was the last gasp for Kentucky. They could not cash in. You know, going back to uh, the circumstances here at Kentucky, CM News and W's, which is a difficult pull for the alumni as well. Last year being 1 in 10, this is a dramatic improvement. If they had been able to, to pull off an upset victory here, it would have gone a long ways to cementing what they were doing as a program. This could end it with a first down, and it does. Graham gets it down to the 15-yard line, and now Kentucky can't stop the clock. And once again, Tennessee, when rushing for better than 100 yards, that stat now improves to 38, 1, and 2 since 1990. Run-pass balance is what Philip Fulmer appreciates, and he gets it again today. Enough and in time to beat this Kentucky team that really had Tennessee on the ropes. You know, people will look at this score and they'll wonder, was this ball game as close as a three-point ball game? And yes, it was. I'll say so. But Tennessee is very fortunate to get out of here today with a win. I will be interested to see what happens tomorrow morning for Tennessee in the polls if Northwestern has an impressive win today. Yeah. Now you're looking at the, the possibility of their perhaps dropping. And they had been the beneficiary of some undefeated teams in front of them being knocked off. But you know what? Over the course of a season and at this level and in this league, you're going to have games like this. Well, Tennessee was able to climb up from number 16 all the way up to four after that loss to Florida in week three. So if they can maintain that, but it's going to be hard for them to get in that bowl alliance pitcher to get to the big bowl in the $8 million payday. Philip Fulmer moves his team to nine and one six and one in the conference with vanderbilt coming up next week on jefferson pilot sports and the kentucky season for bill curry comes to an end at two and six in the league four and seven overall and now the question will there be another season for coach curry in this kentucky program billy jack haskins was courageous to be sure we'll be back to wrap it up right after this SEC Game of the Week was brought to you by Lee Apparel. With new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. A tremendous game effort by Kentucky, but they fall short against number four, Tennessee, 34-31. A look at our Miller Lite players of the game. Greg Kyler, eight catches for 77 yards and a key one for a touchdown to finally give the Volunteers the cushion necessary to win. For Williams, Mo Williams, 30 carries, 151, three touchdowns. A remarkable year for this guy who has set more records at this school than they've probably seen in a lifetime in one season.
As part of our Players of the Game Awards scholarship program, Jefferson Pilot Sports donates $2,000 to the Southeastern Conference to be distributed among its member institutions. We'll be back to put a cap on it from Lexington after this word from your local SEC stations. Pilot SEC Sports Stations. James, pleasure having you with us. Thank you. Mo Williams was everything advertised. Kentucky needs to step it up a notch to get ready for its bowl appearance. Will an era continue or end? We'll soon find out. Jefferson Pilot Sports Production staff outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fits. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of SEC football for James Lofton, Bob Kessling, Tim Brando. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, boy, where would the balls be without Jeff Hall? He has kicked three field goals.